Monday, February 12th. Welcome to the Damon Bruce Show. And this is not the show we wanted to do. As a matter of fact, the show that Larry and I wanted to do started at 8 a.m., but due to technical difficulties, we were unable to do that to say that things have not gone particularly well over the last 24 hours or so. For the 49ers would be an understatement, but I just grabbed these headphones because I do see Lawrence, who has, I believe, trouble shot things. How are you, Larry? What's up? Can you hear me? Can you hear I, me? I can hear you. I can see you, which means this show is already better than this morning's wake up. We apologize to everyone. Larry, router problems haunting the family. Is that what's going on here? Is that what happened? Yeah, router problems for some from whatever reason. Um Poorly timed router difficulty. Did your router know the overtime rules, though? I guess that's the big question, because apparently, as this news is sort of trickling out today, Kyle Shanahan's team was unaware of overtime rules. Uh, Arif Hassan in The Ringer said that the 49ers... Well, well, he set this all up saying that the Kansas City Chiefs have been preparing for new overtime rules since training camp. The 49ers did not do the same. Multiple San Francisco players after the game said that they were unaware that their overtime rules are different in the playoffs than they are in the regular season and that strategy discussions over how to handle overtime period did not occur as a team. Larry, that is a level of negligence that Kyle Shanahan has to wear like a bag of shame on his head. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, um, it made me wonder why, you know, so I understand in a regular season deal with the old rules, why you would take the ball first, but I didn't understand in these current rules where you're going to get the ball either way, why you would want to go first if you won the coin toss, wouldn't you want to go second? So you knew what you needed um, and essentially had four downs to get it done as opposed to three. So. Yeah, I mean, that was a major, a major gaffe um, for sure by the 49ers. I think the other major gaffe was that, you know, there was a there was a lot that happened in this game. I mean, CMC fumbled. Trent Williams had back to back drive killing penalties. Greenlaw went out with an Achilles injury. Um, you know, there was a, a pot return fumble. There was a missed PAT. There was, you know, they the Niners seemed to abandon the run at the end of the um, overtime drive and just soft coverage. I thought they played poorly. They had some poorly timed blitzes in overtime. I mean, it was a, it was a team loss, but the one that's just so, so hard that haunts me is that the Niners had one rushing attempt in, in a three drive period uh, in the second half of the game that resulted in zero first downs against a team that has, a very challenged run defense. So, you know, that it was not a great, it was not a great performance by Shanahan. And uh, you kind of wonder if, if um, you know, how long this one sticks to him, you know, because I mean, the 49ers did a lot of good things, uh, but you know what? The chiefs did more good things. And yeah, you can sit there and say Mahomes is better and he played great down the stretch and he deserved the MVP but, um, you know, the 49ers didn't play a clean game. Um, you know, the, the Chiefs generated nine season high, nine unblocked pressures in the Super Bowl. All, all came on blitzes. You know, they didn't, didn't seem like they were prepared at all for the Spagnolo blitz package. Have you seen the free release highlight on on Clark where McKivitz just let him go and McKivitz and Burford just Jones. Yeah. Uh just let him go. And Ayuk was literally by himself in the end zone. Yeah. Uh, I if, saw if 30 had had a clean pocket, that's that's probably a touchdown nine and a half out of ten times. Yeah. No, I saw Baldy uh, highlight that one. Um you know, I thought Trent McDuffie played an incredible game. I mean, he dominated the Niner wide receivers. And I'll um, tell you, if not Trent McDuffie having a penalty, the 49ers would have started their overtime period with a three and out. Yeah. Had Trent McDuffie not got called with a holding penalty right there. So, um, you know, when the Chiefs hand you opportunity and you do not take it, you're going to lose to them. 
And this was a game that was defined by squandered moments. An opening drive that looked like it was cooking pretty well, then unfortunately is capped with a Christian McCaffrey fumble. You got the Kansas City fumble of the ball, and the 49ers turn that not into points, but a punt. Mahomes then throws you an interception basically right out of the gate in the second half. And do you take advantage of that? They don't. That turns into a punt. And this is in the, you know, this is just, the, the, these are things that can't happen in a Super Bowl, and they doubly can't happen when you're playing the Kansas City Chiefs, who got that champion's blood. I mean, the collective talent of just Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Andy Reid, the three of them know more about winning than the entirety of the 49ers coaching staff and roster put together. We're talking over 70 human beings outweighed by the talent of three. Add Steve Spagnolo. how were the Chiefs the underdog in this game. It's, um, it, it's, I, I guess it's the Niners credit that they were in it as much as they were, uh, cause they didn't come out and play well. The, the, the 49ers saved their worst football of the year for basically the playoffs. And that is going to sting. And I, I really mean it. I, I'm wondering Larry and you and I've spent an awful lot of time trying to explain some patience to people that Rome does not get built in the day. Kyle is a good head coach, and he is. He's a good head coach. He can draw up a scheme. I wonder if he's a leader of men. You know, Steve Young talked about Super Bowls being ripped from bloody hands. Kyle's team doesn't do the ripping. The bloody hands that Super Bowls get ripped from are Kyle's. <laughs> he is the possessor of the bloody hands, not the opponent. Um, two 10-point leads blown as a head coach, and... You know, you can't help but think a little about the Atlanta collapse that, again, he wasn't the head coach for, but that game was dotted with poor offensive decisions. This game gets dotted with poor offensive decisions and execution as well. And you can't have your best players making mistakes in the biggest game of the year. Trent Williams, we're looking at you. Um, Christian McCaffrey. You had a, a very good game, but we're looking at you. Can't have that fumble there on that opening drive. Um, it was uh, it was a devastating loss. A no doubt about it. I mean, there's no. Well, they just they, no, they just, just didn't, it, no excuses. It's a devastating loss. They didn't do enough offensively when they could. I mean, in the first half, the Niner defense was playing out of its mind. Um, you know, they they they're holding Mahomes down. They're holding Mahomes and company to just three points at halftime. They forced two first half turnovers and yet they only led by seven at the break. I mean, that should have been a much bigger lead. And, and then fast forward to the second half, you know, you got the best running back in the game. You've got Christian McCaffrey, who's one of the great running backs in the sport. And then you call six consecutive passes to start the third quarter. And what do you get out of it? Minus two yards and two consecutive three and outs. I mean, <clears throat> that right there, was absolutely criminal. Um, you know, I when you look at Shanahan in the X's and O's matchup with Spagnolo, Spagnolo got the best of him in many of the most consequential plays plays of the game. Um, on the final two Niner possessions, the Chiefs were able to hold the Niners to field goals uh, with timely third down blitzes, and Shanahan's play call showed that he wasn't prepared for it. Um, Purdy had no time to find an open receiver each time he did, you know, just well enough to throw the ball away to avoid a sack. But the worst one was Shanahan's decision to take the ball first after winning the overtime coin toss. That was just objectively wrong with the new OT rules that allow for both teams to possess the ball. Even if the first team scores a touchdown, it's obviously clearly better to go second. So you know what you have to beat. And this allows you to go for it on fourth down, even deep in your own territory when you're trailing. And then after the game, Shanahan stated that he took the ball so the 49ers would get the ball first in the in sudden death in the event that both teams match scores. But I mean, that's preposterous. That's, that feels like spackling a huge mistake. And I'm calling. Uh, but that's an unlikely. That. Yeah, it's an unlikely. That's that's a very unlikely scenario. Um, you know, it's like, so it's just, you know, it's just a, a very, it was, it was frustrating listening to some of his players say that they didn't know the rules. 
um, is never a good look. So, you know, so, I mean, like really, if you go back and recap his decision there in, in overtime, the only scenario that would justify Shanahan's decision was if both teams kicked a field goal and then the Niners got the ball with the chance to win. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'd rather have the knowledge of what I need to do to win with Patrick Mahomes off the field. Um, you know, I mean, it's just, I, 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 to me, you know, I mean, this is one of the worst decisions in the history of, of, uh, playoff coaching. People are comparing it today to Marty Morningweg taking the wind instead of the ball way back in 2002 when the bears proceeded to go down and win the game on the first possession of overtime. Um, you know, I mean, I, it's, it's really, it's really sad because Shanahan has been in position to win three rings and three times he's let it slip away. And you wonder if the players lose their belief in him over time. But, um, you know, this was, this was, it's like, it's easy to say, well, you know, Mahomes and the chiefs are a dynasty, but they, the Niners mishandled that overtime for sure. And, um, Spagnolo out coach Shanahan. I mean, he, he had great timely blitzes. The Niners had no answer. He had an impact on the game. And then the 49ers, and once again, under Shanahan, got a little too pass happy. Though, you know, when you consider their advantage is McCaffrey and their run game, and they go away from that with two key series in the second half, just inexcusable stuff. So what was on full display in the most important moments of that game is one team knows how to win a big game and the other head coach has no clue. I mean, is as much of a, have you ever been in this situation before? And that's what's so damning on Kyle because he's been in this situation now multiple times and he seems to be getting worse at it. And there is no doubt that he is going to be the head coach of the 49ers week one next year. And they might have a fine regular season next year, Larry, and no one's going to give a shit because if you do anything other than bet on them to get to a big moment and blow it, that might be an ill-advised way to go about it because Kyle is just, you know, history tends to repeat itself. And uh, it's a devastating loss. I believe it is among, without a doubt, this is not an exaggeration. That that might be the most devastating loss in the history of this franchise. Is that hyperbole? Am I am I getting too over my skis? Have you got another yeah, it one? Is. It's, well, it's, okay. I mean, the 90, the 90 fumble, uh, you know, that team was a total dynasty and they fumbled in the NFC championship game. Right. That's the NFC championship game. That's not the Super Bowl. So what's the worst loss in a Super Bowl? I, I I think that, I mean, losing to the Ravens, you had first and goal on the five with two minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. And you lost to a old Ravens team that was huffing, um, you know, and, and puffing and they just were out of gas at that point. That was to me a little worse than this, but, but this was bad. This was bad. I mean, this one was there for the taking, um, very frustrating game, you know, all the way through. I mean, look at the box score, the box score says it all. I mean, um, you know, it's like, they also just got to this moment and their, their star cast kind of eroded right before their eyes. They lost Greenlaw, uh, Debo clearly wasn't a hundred percent. Uh, Kittle was a non-factor as a receiver, just a, a factor in the run game. Um, I thought that they didn't run it enough, even though, you know, they McCaffrey got 22 carries. He only averaged three, six a carry, but, um, you know, 38 passes, 22 runs or 31, I guess it was 31 total runs, but 22 to McCaffrey. Uh, that's, you know, I wanted to see more of that. But, yeah. Again, you look you look at the box score and you, pres- you you know it's easy to say well they did run it enough they were balanced but the truth is as you were watching in real time not running enough to me is the defining feature of how the 49ers lost this game um, and I do think it's the worst loss in the history of the franchise. I mean, remember, the Ravens were way up on a Super Bowl that the Niners almost came back in. They were in control of this game early on and they had several chances to put their opponent in a perilous place and they they took none of them and the weakness of the special teams even though look 
It's it's ironic that Moody drills 50 yarders in this game and misses the point after touchdown. I mean, that is a devastating uh, moment that everyone feared might rear its head. And for a minute there, when he made such a long field goal for the first score of the game, it looked like he didn't really need to worry about that. But then that came back to haunt you. And I just, this, this is awful. This is awful. And this is the kind of loss that makes players who used to believe in their coach believe in their coach less. And it is not, I, I think, coincidence that Eric Armstead, who never talks out of turn, or Kyle Juszczyk, who never talks out of turn, are the two guys going on record saying, that son of a bitch never prepared us for this moment. We didn't know about the new overtime rules until Bill Vinovich was reading it on the Jumbotron in the Legion Stadium. Well, I mean, but he's a defensive player. I mean, yeah, I, I would imagine he's got to blame Wilkes first, right? Well, no. So why do, you, why do you send out a defensive player then to make that coin toss? If the defensive side of the ball doesn't know what the rules are, why are you sending Fred Warner out to call heads or tails? Well, it's clear they played it like a regular season game. I mean, in a regular season game, you would take the ball. So because if you score a touchdown, right, it's, that's game the thing. Over. it's clear that they didn't know the rules is my yeah. point. They yeah. didn't understand the situation that they were in. And that is all head coach. That is unforgivable. This is why Andy Reid is talking about it in training camp because he's a champion. And this is why Kyle didn't know what was going on because he is a massive game loser well you know there's no getting around it today i mean today he's got to wear it he's absolutely yes, he got to wear it but i mean there were other factors here um the you know the whoever picked the defensive lineman named reuben named uh solomon thomas you know that has led them down this whole road where they've missed on defensive linemen and they keep drafting defensive linemen and guess what happens You've got a bunch of highly rated defensive linemen that can't play because you're not picking the right guys. And then you got an offensive line that's been neglected because you haven't drafted anybody. So now you're leaning on a fifth round pick who's a good story, but you're going to make him, you know, a bad story because you're going to start him at right tackle all year long. And they got bad offensive line play in this game. They got away from the run. That was on Kyle. Um, to me, that Debo and Kittle didn't touch the ball enough. You know, ultimately, that's on Kyle. Have you um, watched enough of the All-22 yet to see what really happened there? I mean, those, obviously, you know, Kansas City's secondary was sticky all game long, and the pressure was good enough to make Brock get to, you know, he had time to get to a third third read maybe just a handful of times in an entire game before he started running for his life. But Debo was terrible in this game. And I don't want to hear shit about that injury that he occurred in the game because he came back in and he actually played better after it looked like he pulled his hamstring than he did. The Dre Greenlaw thing is just as unfortunate a you got to be kidding me injury. I mean, it, it's almost like the team's cursed in the Super Bowl now. The team that was a perfect 5-0 and is now a devastating 0-3 in three Super Bowls in a row. Kyle being the architect of the last two of them is just, it's just not good, man. And, and, you know, again, you and I aren't excuse makers. You and I are the two guys who have said Kyle might be better at this than his Super Bowl record indicates. I have lost faith in his ability to win a big one. There's a big difference between I'm a really good strategist and I'm a coach who knows how to close out the biggest game of the year. And I don't know if Kyle is that guy. I, I just don't. It's, um, I believe he's a smart football man. I believe his players respect him. And I'm going to have to win I'm going to have to watch him win a Super Bowl before I believe he's going to do it. He feels like he's going to need a change of scenery to win a Super Bowl. I don't, how many times can he walk into that locker room? How many times can that locker room honestly say like, well, now we know what we need to do. Now we're really motivated to get up and get out and win the next one. I mean, this is this is a staggering amount of not closing it out, either in NFC title games or Super Bowls. They have been the second best team in football during the Kansas city chiefs era. And they are a distant second to the Kansas city chiefs. Yeah, no question. I mean, um, you know, on the other hand, they've appeared in seven conference championship games over the last 14 years. So, um, the, the organization has found a way to contend, but they haven't found a way to climb to the top of the mountain and win this game. All right. And, you know, yesterday was very, very frustrating from a lot of standpoints. Um, you wonder if Shanahan needs some help. 
He's wearing multiple hats. He's the head coach and he's the offensive coordinator. Maybe he can't be both. Maybe he's got to be one or the other. You know, maybe that's the issue. Uh, Maybe the issue is they just ultimately everything that you do on offense starts with, can you protect? Can you block it? And they're struggling to come up with an offensive line that can block. So, I mean, no doubt in my mind that they're pretty they're pretty good on the left side and they're pretty ordinary at center, right guard and right tackle. So, let me ask you a question before I think we get they really it. I think they really could use this was going to be an off season where they were going to have to, you know, upgrade the offensive line. Now they need to upgrade the offensive line and the defensive line. And and the question is, can they do that fast enough? to get back into this game again and get another shot at it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is. I seriously hope that their Super Bowl window has not closed. You don't get to keep it open as long as you want. You don't get to be like, well, we're really good and we'll figure it out eventually. That's just not how this league works. You're an injury away from everything going wrong at all times. And this was the most set up to finally get it done football team Kyle might ever have in his entire life. And it, it didn't happen. And it's, it is, it's thoroughly devastating. There is, there's no way to pretend that what we saw wasn't a direct result of a coach just not knowing how to win when it matters most and not running the ball enough in big games has become a defining feature of Kyle Shanahan's coaching strategy in big games. And I just don't know why for a guy who is so committed to the run, overly committed to the run. You get to the Super Bowl and think, yeah, now's the time to find some balance. I just, I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. And um, it, it, it was brutal. Let me, uh, let me just say, Welcome, not only uh, to the Damon Bruce show, but this is, how about this? We didn't have wake up for breakfast, Larry. It's it's brunch wake up with us here after the Super Bowl, thanks to a router issue, but we have solved that issue and we're glad that everyone is here right now. We truly are. Thank you very much for joining us. Damon Bruce, Larry Kruger, uh, we got big wake up plans starting in March, taking this to a three day a week morning show. Please hit like, please hit subscribe. Larry Niners fans are a little sick and tired of hearing it. I have lost 15 subscribers since midnight last night. I think people are just like, I'm out. I'm, I'm just going to take a little vacation from this team for a while. Maybe I'll come back to you, Damon and Larry. Maybe we're going to do more 49er talk in the near future, but a lot of fans are just saying, I, 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 I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to hear it anymore. This well, is well, it's just the way it is just the way it is. And, um, you know what, you know, you come, you join, you, you, uh, leave, you know, do what you got to do. That's Football's what I not for the faint of heart. That's for sure. And of well, all, just some people want to be there in the winner's circle, but they don't want to be there if the team's not winning. And I, I get it. I get it. So do what you got to do, but, uh, we're here going to produce good content. Um, and, um, you know, what can you say? I mean, you they weren't good enough to get it done. Um, you know, Matt Miller, interestingly enough, is like, you know, will the, and I was on in Chicago this morning on the score and they're immediately asking, you know, is Brock Purdy good enough? This is not a Brock Purdy conversation. No. Brock Purdy was fine. We don't need Brock to Purdy's the quarterback. Brock Purdy's offensive line wasn't fine. Uh, the Niners didn't play well. Um, Shanahan, I think, you know, kind of always seems to fall, gets pass happy in these situations and doesn't want to run the ball, gets bored running the ball. I think more than anything, if you say what's Shanahan's primary issue, he's just too impatient. He's too impatient. He doesn't see the forest through the trees. Um, when he falls behind in games, he just abandons the run and just, just tries to sling it all over the yard. And, um, he knows he needs to run, but he doesn't commit to the run. And then this game, if you're not going to commit to the run in a year where Christian McCaffrey, um, you know, won, you know, basically was the offensive player of the year in the league. I mean, when, who are you going to run it with? So I, I don't know. I don't know what to say about, about Shanahan's issues in big games, but man, how do you call nine plays in the third quarter? Eight of them run, eight of them passes. <laughs> 
when you've got Christian McCaffrey. That just just doesn't make it doesn't add up. No, and and I I don't know what what he can say. I'm sure he's working on a lot of justifications. He's you know he he's he's good at explaining things away. I'm calling bullshit on all of it, man. You know, Kyle Shanahan. It says head coach on your on your on your business card, and you as a head coach have now been involved in titanic collapses, titanic collapses. And at some point that defines you more than your regular season boy genius wunderkind card. Your modern Marty Schottenheimer, your Norv Turner. And that's what some guys are. And that's what my fear is here. Some guys are better coordinators than they are head coaches. And maybe that's where this tops out for Kyle. I mean, I hope I hope I'm wrong because he's not going anywhere. We don't even know what his new extension is or how many years he's got. Let me ask you this before we get into just the facts here, Larry. Bill Belichick calls Jed York today personally, says, I would like to be your head coach. What do you do? You say thanks, but no thanks. Now, if if he wants to be the defensive coordinator, I mean, Bill Belichick has had a rough few years here. Bill Belichick is is has asked has asked defensive coaches to be his offensive coordinator. Um, they drafted a quarterback in the first round that they now want to trade. Um, they they've been they have not I had mean, that about Kyle too. I mean, they've they've not they had, had a single quarterback in the first round. He did trade. Yeah, but they but they but he has a quarterback. I mean, you Patriots don't have a quarterback. Um, the other one is that the Patriots haven't had a single player that they drafted get a second contract in years. All right. Well, here's the thing, and Bill. So you don't he, have total control. So not, You're not going to be the GM. I'd rather have him. I mean, he's seventy something years old. I would rather have him be the defensive coordinator. Go out and, and and I would do it. I actually would do it. Why? Because you got six young DBs, um, and you know there was. I mean, you still. You still, I mean, yes, for all the decisions that Shanahan made, they still, the Niner defense still allowed Mahomes to drive the length of the field with the season on the line and score. So it's not like, it's not like uh, Wilkes is some awesome, you know, monster defensive coordinator and they'll be screwed without him. But here's the thing. Mahomes is eventually going to find a way. The 49ers, their failure in this game was executed on special teams, which has been an eternal Kyle Shanahan blind spot. And his offense stunk when it needed to not stink. Again, Debo got better after the hamstring pull. So maybe, you know, when you're talking about who's got to go, you got to cut some salary, you got to figure out things out. What if what if Debo is um, incredibly talented but overpaid, therefore overrated? Uh, George Kittle, but for his big play on fourth and got to have it. I'm not even sure he was in Las Vegas. I mean, uh, George Kittle vanishes for large stretches. And you know what great players do? You can take a half away from them. You can't take an entire game away from them. Patrick Mahomes showed you that. Travis Kelsey showed you that. Travis Kelsey had one catch for one yard at halftime. He ended up with nine catches, and he led the team in receiving. He led the entire game in receiving yards, and all of it came on you know the, the final drive of the of regulation and in overtime. When the chips hit the table, Travis Kelsey is the man. Patrick Mahomes is the man. The 49ers turn into scared little boys when the money's on the table, and it's their head coach who... I mean, maybe that's the, you know, you take on the personality of your head coach. That's what the Lions did all year. Super aggressive. Maybe the personality of their head coach is wrapping your own hands around your own neck and gagging away the biggest games of the year. That is the defining trait of Kyle Shanahan. I don't want to hear about what his regular so you're, you're percentage is. Today you're firing Kyle Shanahan? No, I'm not firing Kyle Shanahan. But I am, I am doubting Kyle Shanahan in such a severe way. I mean, how about this? Let's say the stars align and they're in the Super Bowl again next year and they lose next year. You going to give them a fourth bite at that apple? I mean, I'd only be 45 years old, still a very young man in a lot of ways, but I don't know if I would give a coach a chance to lose a fourth Super Bowl. 
Kyle has been allowed to lose two Super Bowls here. And I'm, look, I don't think, unless you got a better idea. There's 32 teams in the league. I mean, the Lions have never been to a Super Bowl. You're talking about blaming a coach for losing the Super Bowl. I mean, Andy Reid lost the Super Bowl with with uh, McNabb. Would you have dumped Andy Reid? Because now he's in well, Kansas City getting a The Phillies did. Or excuse me, the Eagles did. Right. And they went I'm on to win the Super Bowl. I'm just saying they did, but I don't know if that was a good move for them. I mean, yeah, they they've now dumped the guy who won they won the Super Bowl with. So I mean, I don't know if that was a great move. They got rid of Andy saying he can't get it done. He goes to Kansas City, finds a better quarterback and a better GM and gets it done three times. What's with four false starts? What's with four false starts in this game? I just I I I couldn't believe that. Couldn't believe that. Uh, the Niners O line was not good enough. Um, and it, and that's really what it came down to. I mean, Brock Purdy could, would have found Ayuk on the backside if he had time. But instead, uh, there was a blown protection up front and um, he had no time to throw. So, you know, there you go. But I mean, as far as Shanahan needs to wear, you know, the fact that in the third quarter, they they got away from the pass and they got two or they got away from the run and they got two pass happy with a lead in a huge game and it's happened again it's happened you know multiple times he's some, somewhat defined by that move right there and then of course the OT decision is one that you know that it's indefensible your team didn't know the rules and if your team didn't know the rules it's cuz you didn't know the rules and if you don't know the rules that's it's a hard leg to stand on so and there's plenty of blame for Shanahan. I don't know that I would uh, get rid of him as a coach. I don't think I would. But at the same time, no. Look, I'm there not needs to be some major, major changes. That's I'm not sure. advocating, not advocating for Kyle Shanahan to lose his job. But if I were Jed York, I'm telling him you need to win the Super Bowl next year desperately, because I don't know how much longer I can just go on hoping that you figure it out eventually. I mean, we have a significant sample size of big game failure from Kyle now, don't we not? There's he is. He, I mean, they haven't won. He has not climbed to the top of the mountain. He had a 28, three lead uh, when he was the offensive coordinator in Atlanta. Um, he had a lead of 10 points against the chiefs in Miami. Um, and now this one where, you know, they, they just didn't do enough offensively and, you know, they had the, they had a major run advantage. They didn't take advantage of it. Uh, they let Kansas city hang around till the end and they didn't get any, any, any luck from the officials. There's no question. The officials didn't help. Um, the two most of most penalized tackles in the NFL, like uh, going up against Nick Bosa and the 49er defensive line weren't penalized once, not once. And there's, and there's multiple examples of, them bear hugging guys. So it's, you know, it's, it just, it is what it is. And um, what, what would Eddie D do? He would be really, really pissed, but I don't think he would fire Shanahan. I, I don't think Shanahan should be fired, but he needs to be put on the single most double secret probation a successful NFL head coach could possibly be put on. Um, and, and again, when I keep on hearing from your players that you didn't explain the overtime rules. Wow. I mean, that's just, I, I don't know how that would be survivable for anyone. I mean, well, I, I, it's I, more, I mean, it doesn't really matter if they understand the overtime rules or not. It has much more to do with the, it's about strategizing it's about when to take the ball. You had to know the rules yourself. Well, you had to know what to say at the coin toss. You had to know what to call. I mean, you you won the coin toss. You should have deferred. Instead, you took the ball. That means you don't know. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that I mean, that means I, I don't put to me. It's much more on Kyle than for, you know, the players just need to play ball. If you're a defensive lineman, sack the quarterback, stop the run. Um, but if you're the head coach, you got to know how to, you got to know the proper strategy. And he didn't, he didn't. So there's no way there's it's an indefensible position. It's why he's going to be dragged. So, 
so thoroughly today, coast to coast, because the the move that he made is indefensible. Yeah, it is absolutely indefensible. Uh, welcome, welcome. It is good to have you on the Damon Bruce show, which is basically a late wake up due to technical difficulties to say that people want in uh, and, and want the show is a is, is an understatement. Over a thousand people here in the room right now, which uh, I've rarely had for an 11 o'clock show. Larry, I know that you are simulcasting on your channel as well. Um, thanks to everyone for being here. Well, we got a lot of therapy to go through together. Let's get into just the facts of this, Larry. Just the facts. 10,607 days and counting since the 49ers have won a Super Bowl. Uh, that could have been reset to zero with a win last night, but that did not happen. Uh, Kansas City became the ninth team ever to repeat as Super Bowl champions. They are absolutely spectacular and although this film or excuse me this show uh is going to be filled with an awful lot of blaming the 49ers one thing that needs to be at the forefront is the Kansas City Chiefs have put together one of the finest decades we have ever seen any football team assemble and they have a quarterback who 6 years into his career is already in the single greatest quarterback of all time conversation we have a head coach in Andy Reid who is entering uh, a conversation of head coaching acumen that is going to have him maybe, you know, top five, top three in NFL history. Uh, that's what Andy Reid is becoming. Uh, Travis Kelsey gets to go home with a woman who literally, I don't know if there, any American born woman had a better year than Taylor Swift ever in the history of the United States. She is the biggest single success in her gender globally in terms of entertainment and income and her boyfriend wins the fucking super bowl i mean what what do you what do you want man nobody had a better year than taylor swift other than the kansas city chiefs who now get to party with taylor i mean it's just it's unbelievable what the the, the 49ers ran into here and how good the kansas city chiefs truly are it was the second of 58 super bowls to be tied after regulation and the first to be played under the new overtime rules. And Kyle didn't even know that or didn't talk to his players about it. And for a guy who is as meticulous, I mean, here's the one thing that I think I know you and I will both agree on. Kyle is a, me a meticulous planner. How this escaped him and his planning. That's what I want to know. I, I, I hope you ask him that question in his next media availability. How could you possibly not Give your team the most important piece of information that they could possibly have should you be going to overtime in the Super Bowl. Well, it's not even that. How did you not know it? Because there's no defending that you did know it. You didn't know it. You know, how, you know, forget about your team. You didn't know the rules to overtime in the Super Bowl. You didn't know the rules. And, and it's literally being explained, by the way, by Bill Vinovich. On the thing, like all you had to do was read the, the fucking scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, I'm, what is he doing? Other than well, you know, and, 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 and like he's about to poop his pants into his play sheet under his flat brimmed hat. I mean, Kyle, if, Kyle you don't have any, is a real you thing. You don't have anybody on your headsets who's got the peace of mind to say, hey, guys, I know this is different. This is what we normally do, but this is a difference here. Where, you know, the team that gets the ball first is at a disadvantage in the current rules. The team that gets the ball second has the advantage of knowing what they need. If the Chiefs go first and they kick a field goal, you know all you need is a field goal. If you if the Chiefs go first and they score a touchdown, you know you need a touchdown. There's an advantage to going second over going first. And, I mean, that's really, really clear. And I'm shocked that there's not a single person on the 49er headsets that could say that out loud to the head coach. It's unbelievable. Juwan Jennings threw a touchdown pass. He caught a touchdown pass. Only Nick Foles has ever done that in a Super Bowl. Um, the 49ers have now blown two 10-point leads in the Super Bowl under Kyle Shanahan. And the Chiefs championship parade is, is Valentine's Day. On Wednesday, 
And I don't tell you that to twist the knife. I tell you that to remember, fellas, it's Valentine's Day on Wednesday. Get your shit together. You don't want to be caught without the knowledge of that, like Kyle Shanahan was of the overtime rules in the Super Bowl. Um, the massive special team miscue. Is there a really conference call? Is there a Valentine's Day conference call that maybe somebody could? Hey, Krug, uh, just so you know, I know your mind's spinning, but hey, um, get a card, get some chocolates. Get a, yeah. Get a get a get a balloon, maybe some uh, a gift of some kind, something meaningful. Don't fuck it up. Don't 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 get caught not knowing whether or not you should you should take the bouquet or give the bouquet on Valentine's Day. You're gonna want to know that. Um, if I'm the the 49ers, I'm I'm cutting Ray Ray McLeod today. Get the fuck out of here, Ray Ray. It wasn't, you know, you know, it hit looter, right? I do. But then he watched that. He Ray Ray McLeod is one job. Be a good special teams returner. And he's not even good at that job. And then he has one other job is to know that you fall on that. You don't try to pick it up and make a play. Uh, that's all he has been coached at since Pop Warner. You fall on that. Don't pick it up and make a play. What was he thinking? Looter, again, I want to blame the rookie. Ray Ray's got to tell him whatever, whatever the code word, Charlie, 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 red, 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 which means you just start running to the sideline. You just get out of the way. Ray Ray McLeod had as much to do with losing this Super Bowl as anybody. He really did. I, I, I that, that you cannot be bad at your job and bad at your job. Ray Ray McLeod's biggest play of the entire year was a downfield block like 60 yards down the field for Christian McCaffrey all the way back in week three. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. I know. So it's another rough one, you know? I mean, God, I mean, he has not been reliable. Uh, Brian Schneider was brought in to coordinate the special teams. They draft a rookie kicker. The rookie kicker misses a PAT. They wind up going to overtime because of the miss PAT. I mean, it's just, does this team? It's just, it's just, there's so many things. People are calling team, me a hypocrite because I said last night uh, that I would have taken the ball in overtime. I didn't know the rules. <laughs> I didn't know the rules. I'll freely admit that. I had, I didn't realize that they had changed the overtime rules, but of course, I'm not a coach. Right. We're on YouTube. There's a big difference. We're, on YouTube, we're watching it. I am sitting here. I, I'm broadcasting at the two minute warning. You know, I went live at the two. So I'm watching all this. The volume's not on. And I'm like, all right, well, they won the coin toss. You got a seven. You know, you, you go down here, you score, you win. And all of a sudden people are like, no, that's not how it works anymore. And I'm like, oh, that's right. That's right. They did change these rules here, but we've never seen it actually come into play. Um, It was rough, it, man. It just kind of goes. It kind of goes to show that. Shanahan likes he's got a little bit of Gabe Kapler to him. He likes the defined let's decide things when there's no pressure and just stick with it. Let's find where our 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 you know easily to defend um you know thoughts are and let's go with it and let's not react in real time. Let's you know go with some predetermined thing that we've decided ahead of time and that's where he is on the coin flip he doesn't want to think about hmm do, is my offense better than their defense he just wants to be like you know what this is the way we want to do it and then and obviously that kind of same mindset is is one that he carried into this overtime like you know what we want the ball why because we're going to go score a touchdown and win the game okay but that's not the way these rules work so then you got to then think about what are what is the rule and what is the advantage? And they gave up their advantage. They won the coin toss and could have had the advantage, but gave it up willingly because they didn't know the rule. That's not good. It definitely is not good. Professional opinion, layman's opinion, I think we can all agree that wasn't good. You fire Brian Schneider? He's a really highly qualified special teams coach. Um, well, his special I, teams suck. Yeah. Well, and they've devoted, I mean, they devoted a third round pick to the kicker, a fourth round pick to the, I mean, nobody's devoting more of their dollars and 
draft capital to the special teams and the Niners. So, I mean, I mean, they don't, they they can't even figure out who's who's supposed to return the ball. I haven't. What, the Forty ers haven't had an exciting game breaking, field flipping, changing return like since Kyle's been the coach. <laughs> um, Somebody here is saying board. that they took the ball because the defense was tired. Well, I know. I mean, that's the argument, but I don't know if that was actually the case. I mean, when your defensive players say that they don't know the rules, does that mean the coach doesn't know the rules? I don't know. Or did the coach just not share the rules with them? Um, either way, they were unaware. But, yeah. I mean, that is the argument. That's the argument they're going to spit out today, which is our defense was gassed, and that's why we didn't take the ball. And look, you know, it was a great, you know, we talked about the play that uh, he would draw up on a napkin drunk in Cancun. And like, if I ever get into the Super Bowl, I'm going to run this son of a bitch. And he did it. He did it. And it was the only score. The only touchdown of that first half was a gimmick play. I mean, that's again, that's on Kyle, too. You, you know, getting which was a great, great play call. It worked. It, it was. It did. Oh my God, it was a heart attack on a plate though. When Juwan Jennings threw that just butterfly back, I, I thought that, oh, that before it landed in McCaffrey's hands, I thought that could be a pick six going the other way if somebody's on McCaffrey right there. Um, so, you know, e even, even the touchdown that was scored came with a level of razzle dazzle on it that wasn't just straight up football. And uh, Steve Spagnolo should have a bigger championship ring than anybody else in Kansas City. Like his, he should, what, what, however many diamonds is in anybody's ring, he should get one more diamond in his ring. He was spectacular as a defensive coordinator. And what this guy does throughout his entire year, uh, throughout his entire career, is take great offenses and reduce them to, you ain't so good at this in the biggest games of the year. It's what he does. And he, he did it last night. And running into Patrick Mahomes is a tough proposition. Kyle has now never beaten the Kansas City Chiefs. His four losses against Kansas City Chiefs, regular and postseason included, are his most against any one opponent. And and Patrick Mahomes is, I mean, I, if, if he walked on water today, I wouldn't be surprised. He's, he's just incredible. It's the greatest start that any player has ever had in the NFL to a career. His career begins with six straight AFC title game appearances, three Super Bowl wins. He's only 28 years old, and he's already the fourth quarterback to ever win three Super Bowls. Brady, Montana, Bradshaw, Troy Aikman, and now Mahomes. He's a great and, competitor. He's got a great offensive coordinator. Some terrific weapons, but he's a great competitor. Oh, I mean, it's, it's more than just competitor. It's... He is state of the art. They, they, they. There's not. There's not another Patrick Mahomes rolling off the assembly line. I mean, there He's are guys that run better. There are guys that throw better. There are guys that do everything that he does better. But he is the ultimate winner, and he will not be denied. And you know, you saw what kind of a maniacal competitor he is when they lost to Buffalo earlier this year, and he came unglued. Um, he's he's he needs to win. You know, there's rather win. I need, I want to win, but he needs to win. He's got that crazy competitive gene. And He's the first um, guy at the podium talking about a three peat. Yeah. No, I mean, just, it's, you know, hey, you just won your, your back. You're officially a dynasty right now. You got to go back to back in one of your, you know, collections of Super Bowl excellence. You got to at least have one back to back to be a dynasty. And they're just, no, we, if they win three in a row, Patrick Mahomes is, Sorry, Joe Montana. Sorry, everybody else. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. Sorry, Tom Brady. Sorry, it's, it's Mahomes. If they I mean, win three in a row. If they win three in a row. I mean, the guy's got unbelievable competitive fire. He's he's hard to tackle. He rum, rumbles for big yardage and big moments. He knows exactly when to run. And he's been surrounded by a phenomenal organization and a great play caller who's surrounded him with good weapons. Um, the only Super Bowl he lost, they couldn't block. In this game, they clearly just held, but they got the calls. Um, and um, and Spags held CMC to 3.6 yards per carry, his lowest yards per carry in any game um, where he's had Trent Williams blocking for him. 
So Spags is a genius. You got to give him his flowers and Reed's a phenomenal coach and, um, you know, credit Kansas city. But this one is, is, um, if you sat here today and say, did the chiefs win this game or did the Niners lose it? I would say it's right down the middle. I mean, you could argue it either way. You really could. I think you could, you could make a very compelling argument that the Niners lost this game. I think so. I, I mean, I, I think that that's fair. In, in the in the how about this, in the blame game, there is a ton of blame to go around on the 49ers side. I mean, there there really is. It was it wasn't on just one guy. It's on the entire team that just instead of coming out firing, kind of came out misfiring, and that takes it right back to the head coach, who then also, the day after we find out, doesn't know the rules. That's uh, and there were other issues beyond that. I mean, um, Dre Greenlaw could have been healthy if you had just used your younger linebackers throughout the year a little bit. But no, 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 can't use Jalen Graham at all. Can't use D Winters at fucking all. You didn't use these guys that you had sitting right there. You could have used them against Washington. You could have used them against Arizona, Seattle. You could have introduced them to some game action and preserved Dre Greenlaw. Instead, you didn't. You let Greenlaw and Warner, who you're, you know, linebackers, who basically the Niners run D sucked all year. They just had Greenlaw and Warner. I mean, think about it that way. You have two of the best second-level run-stop artists in the game, and yet your run defense wasn't any good. And the reason it wasn't any good is because you leaned on those two guys exclusively. They made the percentage of tackles that those guys made in the run game is so much bigger than the percentage of tackles that other uh, linebacker duos around the league made. They didn't have Ebukam. They didn't have a Menehu. They didn't have Mosley. They didn't have Aziz. They didn't have Jimmy Ward. All those guys were good against the run. They didn't have any of those guys all year. They got gashed in the preseason. The only time they stopped the run was when their offense got big leads and teams just stopped running because of the game situation. They never really actually stopped the run. So um, they did a decent job in this game of trying to stop the run. But, um, I mean, ultimately, you know, you didn't have a healthy green law. He went out. He, he basically he knew that he had an Achilles that was on the verge of going out. And it just went out on him as he jogged onto the field. So, you know, he was diminished um, by the by the, the reps and the snaps that he played this year. You had the depth to ease off on him. Did you know? Uh, you had the you had the backs to give McCaffrey more of a rest, so he could have gotten to the playoffs with a little bit more rested, uh, healthy situation. Did you know? So I mean, I I think they made some mistakes throughout the year that cost them at the end. Well, and really and look, honest. maybe it's time that Juwan Jennings, instead of being your second wide receiver or your third wide receiver, is your second. When are we going to admit that Debo's a little bit more of a gimmick than he is a great NFL player? Well, I don't think he was healthy either, to be completely honest. And Well, he's never going to be, though. Like, that's the thing. You know what you get. Debo is damaged goods. And look, if you're talking about what are hard choices in front of you, might be the time to move on from Debo and George Kittle. Their, their, their bodies are going to fail them, and they're not winning with them, a Super Bowl anyways. And these guys are vanishing in, in the last Super Bowl that the 49ers played in. Um, you know, there, there's, there's going to be hard choices this off season. Like it, Debo, Kittle, Eric Armstead, one of those names is gone. Like, well, I mean, sure. Kansas city's number one receivers, Rashi rice. They targeted him eight times. He caught six balls. The Niners number one receiver caught three balls for 49 yards. Brandon, Ayuk. three balls all day in the super bowl. So, I mean, they, you obviously didn't get the ball to your number one receiver nearly enough. I mean, they they made more connections and got better per, better performance out of Justin Watson than the Niners got out of Brandon Ayuk. If I told you before the game, oh, by the way, Brandon Ayuk is going to get out performance today by Justin Watson. 
are the Niners going to win? You'd be like, hell no. No, they're not. <laughs> no, no, they will not be winning that game that way. So again, what's the path forward, Larry? You know, how, how does Kyle get, how does Kyle walk in front of his team and say, this time we mean it? Like now, now we're going to circle the wagons. Now we're going to go win a Super Bowl. We'll, you know, this, this is, this is going to be good for us in the future. I saw some fans saying, yeah, this would be good for the 49ers in the future. How? You know what would have been good for the 49ers in the future? Winning this Super Bowl and then being able to take that going forward. Um, you know, now we know what we need to do. I mean, the Niners have, I think, I mean, there are people that, that don't believe this, that believe that Mahomes is on a different level and the Niners need to go after a higher level quarterback. I think they have their guy. I think they have their guy. His name's Brock Purdy. Now build the team around him. Build him a fortress up front. Invest three picks in the current draft on offensive linemen. Invest two or three picks in your defensive line. You know, continue your formula. You're doing free agency for the most part pretty well. Uh, so well that teams around the league are compa are complaining about how many compensatory selections you're coming away with. So keep doing it. Keep, keep uh, you know, keep going after the top free agent if you can and um, try to get the best players on your team. Um, and try to replenish in the draft and and keep your roster young and surround. I mean, Shanahan's a relatively young man. Purdy's a relatively young man. Um, you know, th th I would imagine Andy Reid is only going to coach for another year, maybe two. Maybe this is it. Maybe he'll retire. But no Reed, way he's walking. Look, he's got. He might. I mean, he's, he's how old is Andy Reid? He's got. He's heavy. He's old. I mean, he's. He doesn't look like he's. Gonna Look, be around he does, forever. Andy Reid couldn't give a flying fuck about his own family and his dipshit, often arrested children are proof of that. All he loves is football, and he's got the greatest quarterback on the planet. He ain't going anywhere. Nowhere. Well, you know what? He looks like he's in terrible shape, so maybe he is going somewhere. Well, well you know, get him a little Nutra system. I don't know. <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, the, the guy is, is Andy Reid. Old enough to, I think, have at least four more years with Patrick Mahomes as a head coach. I mean, I, who walks away from him? He's, six, he's 65. All right. A lot of, lot of coaches. A lot of coaches yeah. coaching, you know, longer than 65. So. Started, started as an O-line coach at SF State. How about that? Maybe get Andy Reid. How about this? Kyle, we're letting you go. For who? Andy Reid. We gave him, <laughs> we, we gave him part ownership. He's in, you're out. Oh man. Yeah, and they're not going, they're not getting rid of Kyle, but no, at the not. same time, you know, I I've suggested it in the past that, you know, I mean, I know they have a guy named Brian Hampton up in the booth, but maybe you need somebody right there on the sideline who can be like, Hey, look, you know, I mean, Jim Harbaugh would lose his can lose control on the sidelines, but he had Brad Seeley sitting right there and he listened to Brad Seeley. Maybe Shanahan needs an on field um, guy in his ear saying, Hey, you know what? Yeah. You're while you're picking uh, the right play out of your 18 page, uh, you know, playbook, let's, let's let me focus on the clock and, and the strategizing and, you know, you know, it's, what a, big, it's a big job. It's a big job. There's no, I, question. you know, it is a big job, but I guarantee I could do it. I'll yeah. do it for half the price of the next yeah. guy you might have. Cause here's the job, Larry. Here's the entire job. Hey, Kyle, run the fucking ball. Yeah, run the ball. That's the job. Kyle, I know you got a lot of good ideas in there. There's no better idea than student body left. Run the fucking ball. Run the ball. And the 49ers need a run the ball coach. <laughs> they do. They absolutely do. What are you? I'm the offensive coordinator. I'm the defensive coordinator. I'm the special teams. I'm the run the ball coach. I, I go up to Kyle and remind him this is still an available option for him with Christian McCaffrey, who just picked up the offensive player of the year. Run the ball. They need a big dom. Here, hold, <laughs> hold on. Give me give me 30 seconds. <laughs> they need a big dom. I mean, just run the ball. Run the ball. Look, Brock came out, and he started well in the game. He hit his first five passes of the game. At the end of the first quarter, he was 8 of 10 for 105 yards. There are times where you want to say, look, this is, you know, this is a quarterback that is worthy of believing in. This is a quarterback who you do want 
to ask to make plays because he's been making plays for you all year. Also, run the ball. Why don't you do that, Cal? Run the ball. Larry will be back in a moment. Oh, Larry's back right now. There he is. Run the ball. Run the damn ball. Larry, I think I know what happened. I think that you just stepped outside and you took a leak in your front yard. You didn't even take it to the bathroom. Is that what just happened? I would never take a leak in the front yard. <laughs> no, no. I had some guy, Some we had a UPS guy, and he was knocking uh, at the door. Oh. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, uh... I don't know. I'll just I'll just grab the package and run inside. It's always Christmas here, Damon. Stuff is arriving at all times. Did you order a run the ball coach? Is that Amazon? Give me a run the ball coach. I ordered I ordered a right tackle and a side of uh, <laughs> right guard. And a side. I I I ordered uh, two tackles and a wide receiver who's going to make big plays. Look, I really like Debo. I really like George Kittle. I really like Eric Armstead. I really like Trent. I really, I like an awful lot of these 49ers. They were good enough to win the Super Bowl this year. I like Kyle, but it keeps on coming up short with the same dudes involved over and over and over again. And you got to try something different. This team needs a little bit of a shakeup, Larry. It does. You just this ain't a run it back situation. Well, and I kicked, mean, it they, never they've is. Kicked the, they've kicked the the can down the road on so many of these salaries that this bill is going to hit the table. I, I was reading something in Sports Illustrated about facing more roster questions. It was written by uh, Albert Breer. And he basically said, you know, the next year salary cap is going to land between 240, 245 million dollars, which means that with about 212 million dollars committed once Brandon Ayuk's fully guaranteed fifth year option hits the table, they're going to have to fill out 44 roster spots between 28 and 23 million dollars, which is impossible. So they're going to have to take a big salary of a player that everybody really likes, and they're going to have to who, – who, who would fetch you the most on the open market? Debo, George Kittle hit the block. These guys got a lot of value, a lot of value. Who's going to get you even more? You got to make a tough call, Larry. Who's it on? Who's who's going? Well, I, I don't think Juice is going to be back. That would be my guess. That would be the one that, that goes. And then also the Ayuk thing, yeah, if you take his first – if you take all of his um, – you know, salary and, but if you get, if you, you know, then it looks massive, but if you can sign him to a long-term deal, you can minimize that first look that first year and, um, and make it a little bit more palatable. So, you know, I mean, I would say this could be a number of guys who could be leaving. I mean, you, you might see, um, Eric Armstead moving. You could, you're definitely going to see, them wave goodbye to all their free agents. I mean, all you know, what I think is going to hurt you, Evans, Kinlaw. Who's what's that? Dre Greenlaw. Bye bye. I, I don't know about that. Well, dude, know about first that. of all, he's not playing next year. He's got nine months with a popped Achilles, right? So he's not even. I, I don't know if you can say goodbye then. And then after that, he's just he's he's definitively damaged goods. He's always getting hurt. I love Dre Greenlaw, but it might be time to go. Again, you got ticking clocks on a lot of these guys' bodies. And I think that you have to factor that into some tough decisions that are coming up. Yeah, I mean, there's no question there's going to be tough decisions. I mean, you've got a bunch of free agents. Um, I could give you the list of 49er free agents if you want to take a look. But, I mean, it's a bunch. Um, and then and then you're probably going to let most of them go. So that's that's just the way it is. I mean... Um, a lot of their free agents are just going to leave and then they're probably going to, you know, have to sign, maybe they'll sa sign, maybe one of them. So I would say, okay, so right now, if you said free agents, let's see. Um, let me jump, jump to free agents. Here we go. 2020, 2024 free agents. All right. Here's the list. And these are the guys who all these guys, for the most part, are unrestricted. Randy Gregory, gone. Chase Young, gone. Sam Darnold. By the gone. way, hold on, hold on. I'm just going to call time out right there. 
you're right about him being gone. Chase Young, you played a Super Bowl. Chase Young showed up in the Super Bowl. He, he did. played hard. He, he played did. hard. That was good to see. Uh, Sam Darnold, uh, four and a half million. I think he'll be moving on. Kinlaw at three point eight million. He'll probably be moving on. Tayshawn Gibson at two point nine. He'll be moving on. Sebastian Joseph Day at two point seven. He'll be gone. Oren Burks at two point five. He'll be gone. Cleveland Farrell at two point five. He might return. Uh, John Feliciano at two point two five. He'll probably be gone. Kevin Givens at two point one will be gone. Ray Ray at two million will be gone. So I mean that's. They also have Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, um, um, who else? Ross Dwelly, Brandon Allen, I think will stay. Uh, Chris Conley, Logan Ryan, Matt Pryor, Juwan Jennings probably leaves. Ben Barch, Charlie Warner, Terrence Mitchell. See, I would try. I would figure out a way to bring Juwan Jennings back and trade Debo. Yeah, but the thing is, Debo's already signed, and so Debo's got a big dollar figure amount. And he's coming off a year where he was pretty banged up. I don't know what kind of market there's going to be for Debo, to be completely honest. Now, if you want to move Ayuk, uh, you could probably get a first-round pick for Ayuk. You want to move Ayuk? No. I'm bringing Ayuk back. And that's the thing. He's not coming back for just his fifth-year deal here. You're going to have to sign him to a multi-year extension. Probably three years, $75 million, something like that, $25 million a year, something like that. Isn't it funny that, you know, Jennings more so, but less so Chris Conley's played. You you had guys who were hardly involved in regular season games involved in this Super Bowl. And uh, it just, it went wrong, man. It went wrong. There's no other way to say it. That game went wrong. Um, you know, it's funny, though. It's amazing. The Chiefs had two of the most penalized offensive linemen in the entire league. And they played a flag-free game in this game. Chiefs had six penalties. Only two of them two of them were on the offensive side of the ball. Neither were on the offensive line. Same, and, same referee as the last Super Bowl against the Chiefs, too. Bill Vinovich is just, he ain't calling it. Yeah. He ain't calling it. And that's, you know, if, if you are the Chiefs and you know that, you're going in with the Legion of Boom mindset. Commit a foul on every play. Dare this son of a bitch to throw a flag on every single play. And he didn't even do it once. And Nick Bosa absolutely got held on a couple of plays because Nick Bosa absolutely gets held in every football game he has ever played in since Pop Warner. So that's rough. Yeah, no question. No question about it. Um, I mean, it, there's a lot to complain about, you know, and there's a lot of unhappy people today. And even my 14-year-old's going, you know what, Dad, if they can't win this one, then it's probably going to be years before they're back winning because, you know, it's like everything was set up in this game for them. If not um, now, when? And, <laughs> and, and it's totally true. I mean, it's totally true. But at the same time, I do think the 49ers will, um, will probably get back there in the next couple of years. That'd be my guess. Um, but it's going to be a totally different looking team. You know, there's going to be a half every time you tear this thing back down, you know, there's guys who get hurt, guys who retire, um, you know, Purdy's young enough. There's no question. It's not like he's at the end. He's he's just at the beginning. So Look, I do love, think he'll get and, and, and we he played we, pretty well, he played so pretty well. We love Brock Purdy and the story that he is and the year that he had at his price point. Oh, my God. It's the best bargain in professional sports. What do you think of Purdy making thirty eight million dollars a year? Well, we'll see. I mean, he's gonna they're gonna pay him the going rate. That sounds like a little on the high side, but um I would well, say for two years from now, is that gonna be the high side? It's, it's probably where it comes in. You know, yeah. hey, starting NFL quarterbacks who are starting NFL quarterbacks, that number's around forty. I mean, it really is. Yeah. I mean, and just to, there's several guys that are gonna be gone. I mean you know, as I said, Chase Young, Kinlaw, uh, Gibson, Dwelly, uh, Ray Ray. I mean, those guys are all going to be gone. So they're going to have to, they're going to have to do a really good job in the draft, replenishing their roster, um, and they're going to have to make some some really good decisions on on who they draft along that offensive line. I mean, they need they need a major major foundation piece at right tackle, and um, 
and they just overall need just a better offensive line, top top to bottom, and defensive line as well. They got to get more youth and more speed and more talent on their defensive line. Right now, what do you got for sure next year? Bosa, Armstead, and Hargrave. If Armstead comes back, so you know you you still got another spot on your starting group. You got all your backups to be concerned with. Um, yeah, I mean they they've got um, they've got a daunting task in front of them for sure and now you also have um in more evidence that kyle shanahan swallows the olive in some of the biggest moments so you kind of wonder is he going to be able to do it and every year that goes by that he doesn't do it it's going to be more and more the story of can he do it and um that's 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 the question well i mean like i feel like i can almost outside of knowing the final score of next season's regular season games. I'm ready to do every single post game show for next regular season right now. Here's how it's going to sound. Hey, the 49ers won today, but who gives a shit? Cause when they get to the playoffs, Kyle's going to blow it. And that was the shame of all of this because this is now a self-fulfilling prophecy until it isn't. And you don't get many chance to prove that it isn't. And last night was probably the best chance Kyle might ever have to prove he can win a big game and he didn't. So it's it's just going to keep on going. And we're going to have a whole bunch of people saying, well, it ain't Purdy. I told you it ain't Purdy. Or, you know, the, the carriage turns back into a pumpkin. I thought Purdy was fine last night. Get Purdy some protection. I think he's good enough to carve the league up. I really do. Um, I, I It just, I'm already over next year. And we're as far away from it <laughs> as you can get. Well, I mean, next year's a totally different year. I mean, we'll see where it goes. I mean, I, I, well, here's gonna, the thing, unless it goes to the Super Bowl and wins, everyone just keeps laughing. The Niners have nothing left to do. There is no regular season ca- the test. There is no pop quiz. It's all about the final exam, which they keep flunking. No doubt. And they're going to have to uh, get back in that game and block it out and, and make another run, you know, and they're fully capable of doing it. Um, they're going to win a lot of games, as you said, and, but ultimately it's going to be that ult- that question of, can they win the big one? I mean, that's the thing. Kyle Shanahan firmly wears the label, the best co- coach in football who hasn't won a ring, you know, and he's not going to get endless opportunities, but he's going to have a few more for sure. Um, very frustrating game across the board. Yeah, G. Martinez using my words against me, and he's right. It's about the journey. <laughs> People are sick and tired of journeys. They want a destination. It's rough. You know what else really, really hurts? This one hurt me. My four-year-old I said, Dad, are you still going to take me out of school to go to a parade this week? I said, no, son, I'm not. He said, but aren't we champions? I said, no, son. No, son, you're not. It didn't happen. You know, he's four. He doesn't understand it. <laughs> and and he he thought he was he thought he was gonna go to a parade this week. Ah, oh, I, I I shouldn't have even told him about it. <laughs> yeah. I should Well, have I mean, hey, you know, my 14 year old is despondent. He's like, Dad, it's never gonna happen. And I'm like, you know what? Um you can't think that way because you know, you, you just don't know what life's bringing you. None of us even knew when the Niners lost the Super Bowl last time, four years ago, that they would that that Brock Purdy even existed. So now you have a good young quarterback who you believe in, um, and now it's just about building up the 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 team around him, and let's see if you can get it done. Um, and and the competition's fierce. Detroit's going to be good. Green Bay's going to be good. Uh, Chargers are going to get good with Harbaugh, and there's going to be some good good teams out there. I mean, Yellow I'll tell you bear. the first, the first thing I would do is, um, you know, I mean, Kyle is going to run the offense. So, you know, I would look for some other offensive coach that he could have work with him to run the ball coach, the, that, that he would respect their game managing ability a little bit. And then I would go after Bill Belichick if you could get him. Why? Because you have six good young DBs and he's one of the great DB coaches of all time and um and identifier so it's like you you bring him in you pay him a ton of money 
you let him be the defensive coordinator for a year or two, and maybe you get over the top. I mean, it's an ideal no, but um, you do need to do something that makes all your guys believe that you're getting closer to the destination. And maybe bringing in a guy with that kind of resume would say, hey, look, we're not we're not about our personal comfort or his personal comfort. We're all about let's get this ring. Um, and it would serve as a loud message. It would get everybody's attention and um, and it would give them a new kind of lease on life. I would do it. If he's at all interested, I would do it. This loss is 50-50 Purdy Kyle. I would say 50 for sure on Kyle. Uh, Brock Purdy made no mistakes last night. None. It's not 50-50 on Purdy. Not at That's all. That's for sure. Not at all. I mean, it's you might want to say it's 50-50. Yeah, I mean, it might be 50-50 on Kyle versus the rest of the coaching staff. Um, But, I, you know, come on. It's not, I mean, Purdy played pretty well in this game. I mean, he led them to three scoring drives late. Um, so it's not like they, they just, you know, they absolutely dominated Purdy. He found a way to drive the team, but they couldn't score in the red zone. You know, Brock and, Purdy, again, when you were talking to your UPS driver, Purdy completed his first five throws of the game. He was 8 of 10 for 105 yards in the first quarter. But in the remainder of the game, he only threw for another 100 yards. He was under pressure and duress for uh, a lot of that. Um, Josh Dubow had this one. Since the start of the second quarter, through the end of the, uh, through the start of the second quarter, through 223 remaining in the third quarter, Juwan Jennings had outpassed Brock Purdy. Juwan Jennings' his touchdown pass went 21 yards. Purdy threw for 17 yards between the second and nearly the end of the third quarter. And again, you're you're getting no opportunities to put up passing numbers when you Get pressured on first down, miss on second down, get stopped on third down, and you punt. The three drives of the second half, the first three drives of the second half are where the 49ers lost this game to the point where the Niners were still winning on the scoreboard. But I even went upstairs and told my wife and my in-laws who were upstairs watching the game, I went upstairs at that moment, I said the 49ers are going to lose this game. They just handed every ounce of momentum that they might have had right back to the Kansas City Chiefs. And all Patrick Mahomes needs is this. And they gave it to him over and over and over again. And they didn't take advantage of anything that Patrick Mahomes gave them. They also benched Ambry Thomas, by the way. He only played one defensive snap. In five of the Niners' six losses this season, he played less than five snaps on defense. What happened there? Obviously, they wanted to Why go. Why are you changing else. horses in the biggest race of the year? Yeah. I honestly didn't know that. Are you, you ser- one snap for Ambry Thomas? One snap. All right. Well, I guess it definitely is time to fire Steve Wilkes then, right? I mean, isn't that where Steve Wilkes is supposed to be the best? I'm, 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 I'm your secondary coach here. How is he not? How does he not have one of his best players up to speed and ready to go for the Super Bowl? Why do you have a guy who literally getting inserted into the lineup after the bye week in Jacksonville on helped improve your defense, and then he has what a couple of bad postseason games, and you just give up on him? I don't know. I don't know what to say. Wow, that's an indictment right there. So uh, we got an awful lot of super chats, Larry. I- I'm playing the role of Larry today where I'm kind of running the show on my side. This is normally what Larry does. Uh, so I'm going to try to go through some super chats here the very best we can. And uh, as always, thank you very much for the support of the channel. Like and subscribe to both what Larry and I are doing. Memberships available. Um, and we appreciate you being here very, very much. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, let's get going. First of all, SF Indico saying (laughs) this was worse than season eight of game of Thrones. Yeah. It was an awesome story right up until the very end. I will give you that one. Um, CG Jones fire Kyle hire bill Belichick. I'm not wrong. 
I mean, here's the thing. No one's in position to argue with you today. It's not happening, but we're not going to argue against it. Jed, um, Jed said he would have been happy with the Niners lost against Detroit. So he's Kyle ain't going anywhere. I mean, that sounds, uh, isn't that like the opposite of Eddie D? It does. It does sound like the opposite of Eddie D. But, um, you know, Jed just feels like he's got this organization going in the right direction. And, you know, Jed's a relatively young man. I think his assumption is is that eventually they'll get it done. But um, I don't know that that's the right kind of mindset going forward. You may need a more of a determined mindset than that. Um, Mike Baker says, but we didn't see this coming the last two games. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 they weren't trending in the right direction at the end of the year. Uh, I didn't run it enough. Seems like the most accurate title for title for Kyle Shanahan's biography at this point. It, it really does. Sporticus. It really does. Uh, this is, uh, Gizmo Maltese saying Kyle doesn't get the ball to his stars and clutch moments the way that Reed does to Kelsey. You need a set uh, you you need a set of hard to stop plays to finish the big game. I don't know what they was going at the end there, but yeah, I hear you. Uh, uh, best best players on this team weren't touching the ball enough. And um, again, George Kittle, Debo, Trent Williams had terrible Super Bowls. Moving from San Fran was the curse. Just the facts, Mike Baker. I I will tell you that Levi Stadium sucks. I will go to my grave saying that. Um, 49ers need uh, leaders with attitude. Well, look, they got a lot of attitude and swagger. It's not for a lack of attitude. What they need is a coach who knows the overtime rules in the Super Bowl. Should they actually reach that, right? Chris Jones hiding, holding sideline buddies uh, was just looking mad. Um, I, I, you know, they the Niners could use Chris Jones. Now, as far as they need somebody on their defensive front seven to – who who's just um you know just absolutely hell bent to win. I mean Chris Jones is one of the great competitors of his era. They could use a little bit of his toughness on their defensive line, no doubt. Smack Jones for 5 comes in. Oh no, we just did that. Sorry. Thank you Smack. Flav says uh sorry Damon, but you sound ridiculous. Kyle Shanahan just went toe to toe with Mr. Irrelevant again in the Super Bowl. Uh, that Reed couldn't win without 21 years. Get real. He's a top three coach. Players have to execute. I agree with all of that. He keeps losing Super Bowls. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I'm not moving on either. He's not getting moved on from. But everything that we've seen to this point is just this guy gets the biggest game of the year and it gets worse, not better. And that just, it's not a good trend, man. And how much longer can he walk into that locker room and still command the full attention of it like he used to? At some point in time, players start saying, you know, he's really good at this, but is he great at this? Some guys top out as coordinators. Some guys just aren't head coaches. And Kyle... Is he a wartime consigliere? Well, what he, we know he's not right now is a Super Bowl winning head coach. So I would say don't the only thing I don't like about the Niners is they tend to make decisions that they're comfortable with. They need to start making some uncomfortable decisions. You know, when I say that, I mean, start bringing guys into the room that aren't going to aren't going to you know, all pull the rope in the same direction. Go bring in some guys that, you know, are going to be tough to deal with. Um, you know, I, I want to see them bring in some tough, some, some add some toughness to this football team, mental and physical toughness in this draft. They better be a whole lot tougher football team next year than they are right now. Uh, Cassius Boyd says, I think we're an O-line away from winning it all. Greg Argisi, all due respect, KCD run blitzed a lot. We lost because Greenlaw got hurt. Look at the stats. Brock played his ass off better than Lamar against Holmes. Again, anyone trying to blame Brock Purdy today is just got such a hard on to crap on Brock at all times that they're going to use a Super Bowl loss to do that. He was he wasn't enough a part of the solution to win the game, but he wasn't the problem that lost the game. 
Matthew Rowley says, I'm considering not watching the NFL next year. Stop it. That's where we're going to thank you for the super chat. You'll be back week one. You know it, and I know it, and the NFL knows it. Uh, this is Gizmo Maltese saying 49ers won the Super Bowl using the West Coast offense. That's using the passing game as a ball control. They were masters of the dink and dunk. When the game was on the line, they could still dink and dunk, kill the clock, and score. They are more explosive now, but, man, the continuity just has not been there. you got to have some plays that you can go to against any defense, and they just didn't seem like they had that go-to play. Greg Argisi. Yep, sorry. Greg Argisi saying Purdy is elite. Believe it. Here's the thing. He's not elite, but he's good. He's very good. And if he does next year, like he played in the regular season, if he continues to improve here, he'll enter that elite conversation. He's very, very, very good. There's no doubt about that. And very, very, very good is officially the best quarterback the 49ers have had since Steve Young. Uh, born in the 90s, only no three losses in the Super Bowl. After coming back against the Packers down 24-7, the season seemed special. We had a two-game winning, uh, two winning field goals. Mahomes got a game-winning touchdown, and that's the difference. Yeah, field goals get you beat against the Kansas City Chiefs. Herbie Holland. Come on, Larry. Eddie D was firing Walsh after the 87 loss to the Vikings and Eagles won the Super Bowl after they fired Andy. Boy, I'm really beginning to question your knowledge. Fire Shanahan. No, he's yeah. not getting fired. He's not, he's not getting fired. I mean, Herbie, you can say whatever the fuck you want. And ball and Walsh did not get fired after the 87 season. He coached in 88 and could have continued to coach after that if he had chosen to. Lori Matthews, Ray Ray's been good this season. He also had a hell of a catch and took a big hit. Let's not overreact here. Lori, I love you. Ray Ray should not be allowed back in the facility ever again. He's done. No more Ray Ray McLeod. He doesn't do enough on special teams, and he uh, made a, as big of a mistake that you fundamentally learn not to make in Pop Warner football. Uh, green glass full. Thought Brock and the D had a bad coach. Uh, Thought Brock and the D did great. Bad coaching, though. Brock was good. Defensive line kind of did its job. Defensive line holding the Kansas City Chiefs to three points in the first half is supposed to be a pretty good half for a defense. They didn't score enough. They I don't know if I don't I don't know if I'd call it great, though. I mean, you're giving up 455 total yards. I don't know if I'd call that great. No, it's not, it's certainly not great, but it felt like the vast majority of those yards came at the end of the game. I mean, for the they were in position to win this in regulation more than they were in position to win it in overtime. I just uh, think if you look at the fumbles in this game, what there were five fumbles for by by Kansas City, and, and they, lost, they one. lost one. The Niners had two fumbles and they lost two, so there were seven fumbles and the Chiefs fell on six of them. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that right there. I mean, you want to say the difference in the game, seven fumbles and the Chiefs fell on six. James WF, the O-line was pushed back three yards on that extra point. It's not on Moody. No, that thing came out low. That was on Moody. That was on Moody. And and sure, you want to you want to say that the offensive line didn't get its job done. I think that that's a defining feature of this game. Um, Matthew Raleigh said, one of the things I didn't hate was us taking the ball in overtime. Defense was gassed both sides. No, 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 no. There's, you don't, you don't factor in who's tired in that moment. Well, I mean, how long was the drive? Um, how long was the drive at the end of the game? It wasn't, it wasn't a 15 play drive. It was like a 12 play drive, right? Let me see. I got to open it up. Let me get to some, some more. 13 play, 13 play, 75. No, that was, an, that was, uh, no, that was overtime. It was an 11 play, 64 yard drive in a minute 50. A minute 50 drive. Mike Baker says, you two obviously see the code in the matrix. I, I don't No, Mike, you're, you're a great fan. We're just, uh, hosting an angry show this morning, this afternoon. Uh, had Hydra at running back and tied two heads back. Okay, I get what you're saying. You had you had three guys who could run the ball and you only let one do it. Well, one did it so well that he was named the offensive player of the year. Um, 
And I don't know how much more of a better year Christian McCaffrey would have had, better of a postseason Christian McCaffrey would have had with, call it, 30, 40 less carries on his body than coming into the Super Bowl had they given those carries to either Mitchell or Mason. Um, But I would like to see those guys use more. And not exploring the talent on their own depth chart is maybe something that this team needs to reconsider. Like you were saying, viable linebackers who they didn't give any snaps to all year were on this roster. Um, James, again, Larry, find a new co-host. Damon's takes are awful. Hey, thanks for the super chat, dipshit. Uh, by the way, Larry's agreeing with everything I'm saying. So what, what are you even talking about? <laughs> we're, we're kind of on the same page over here. Juwan Jennings, five years, 40 million, number one receiver. He shows up. He's, he's going to be gone. Uh, I, I don't think because Debo signed and not tradable. Uh, Ayuk is too good to trade, and they're not going to pay three wide receivers. So Juwan is going to have fans all around football, and he's going to get paid, and he's going to leave. Flav again, because Chase Young played well, it might not happen. But if he doesn't like offers, I could see him back on a one-year deal. I would do it. What's the price? What's the price for Chase? He's no way. Get more than no a way. He's, contract offer. When he dogged it in the conference title game, no way. He's gone. Uh, they need to pull a move like the Rams. Sell Debo, Ayuk, Juice, and Greenlaw. It's tough, but Debo and Ayuk just don't get it done. 57 is always hurt. Ayuk gets it done. Everyone else there, they're going to they're gonna be discussed. They will be discussed this year, this offseason. Uh, Iceman, maybe karma for leaving San Francisco, but the Niners are now the Bills of the NFC. They do come up short for a very talented team. That was it, guys. Can Purdy beat Mahomes, Allen, Jackson, Burrow, Stroud, Herbert? Love, question mark. Quarterbacks have to win Super Bowls, always have and always will. No, defense wins championships. I mean, uh, had, had the defense been even better, uh, they, they would, but look, I don't, I don't, Purdy's not the problem. And here's the thing, this whole, like, get rid of Purdy, for whom? For who? You can bring Kirk, in yeah. Kirk Cousins with all Kirk of his Cousins. Get yeah. out of here. Is Kirk Cousins an, even an upgrade? No. And at the price point, it's a detriment to the entire roster. So, no. Uh, go all in on the O-line or get Josh Allen. Okay. I mean, that's all right. Josh Allen, by the way, turns the ball over an awful lot and hasn't won a thing either. Was he talking about that Josh Allen? I think he's talking about oh. the Jaguars defensive end, Josh Allen. Maybe, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe that does make more sense if you think about it, Larry. Good job there. Um, uh, Maddie says uh, a little something for the jingle jangle. Downplaying getting a dog walk by Bengals and Ravens. This team can't compete with the competition of the AFC period. Purdy is average at best. Uh, again, I, there there are times to argue with you. This is probably not one of those times. Uh, the AFC the AFC put it on the Niners hard this year. There's no doubt about it. It's going to be harder. Rams, Lions, and Packers. It officially doesn't get easier as you get older and other young teams are still frosty and ready to go. Yep. Uh, two more here. We ran the ball. What we want to do is mix in the run behind, win the third, but that's what cost us. The old line, no cash. On the KC turnovers, that's the thing. When Kansas City hands you an opportunity, you have to take advantage of. Kansas City handed the 49ers offense multiple opportunities to run up a score on them, and those turned into punts, not even field goals. They must get the O-line right. Everything will follow. Khalid Rice. Thank you, Khalid. Appreciate it. Uh, We appreciate you all being here. I hope I didn't miss any Super Chats as we were diving into about 40 Super Chats in a row there. We thank you so much, Damon Bruce, Larry Kruger. It might not be wake up. Let's call it brunch. It's officially the Damon Bruce show, though, which means, Larry, if you don't mind, I have to tell everyone about my good friend, Ike, who had a huge role in both you and I 
going to Las Vegas. And we had a great time in Las Vegas. That's why it's such such a sour feeling for such a fun week to end like this. Uh, but thanks so much to Ike's. His sandwiches are absolutely remarkable. They're available almost up and down the West Coast, any major city you're in now. And if they're not in your city, believe me, they could be coming soon. He keeps on growing. His sandwiches are delicious. Download that Ike's Rewards app. You'll be very, very happy you did. Post Game and Damon last night brought to you by uh, Hughes Orthopedics. Larry, you met Dr. Paul Hughes at, uh, at dinner uh, on Friday night, and he was already telling you about the things that he can do with stem, stem cells and helping regenerate bodies heal. And, and Dr. Paul Hughes is got offices in San Mateo, satellite offices throughout the Bay Area. If you want to avoid an orthopedic surgery, ironically, the website to go to is orthopedicsurgeries.com. Check out Dr. Paul Hughes, info at orthopedicsurgeries.com. And if you use the code word Hunter, which is the name of his nine-year-old son, who I met, absolutely charming kid, um, uh, you can get 50% off your procedure. So there you go. Uh, sponsorships taken care of. Um, fans taken care of. Super chat here. Two things can be true. Kyle and Purdy are average. I would say that there's no statistical proof that they are average. They're statistically above average, but unfortunately, the worst of them happens to continue to come out in, in big games. Well, you can't say that. Here's the thing. Purdy's never lost a big game he's been in and started and finished until last night, and I can't put that loss on Brock Purdy. It's not like he had any galactic failure in that game. Um There you go. Hi, I'm still here, everyone. Um, that was just, that was Kyle. Again, he's not average, but he gets to the biggest game and it just, it feels like they tighten up, Larry. You know, well, puckering, they, yeah, puckering they, is what they, they call definitely it. Definitely do. I mean, they definitely do. There's just no doubt about it. Um, you know, and I don't know if it's the pressure of the moment. Or if you know what what the deal is, but they they tend to get too pass happy. They don't run enough, and um, the game ends, and you look up and you're like, "Well, wait a second, why didn't they run more?" So you know, it's just you know, at the end of the day, you know, Mahomes um, and Reed are on the top of the sport. And they're the they're the very best. They are the yardstick of excellence that the entire league is measuring itself against. There is no doubt about that. But I mean, the one thing that is so frustrating is that Shanahan now in three Super Bowls as either the offensive coordinator or head coach, he's an offensive guy who knows offensive football. His teams have been outscored in the fourth quarter in overtime, sixty-eight to twelve. The sixty-eight number is bad, but the twelve is heinous you know you've played in three super bowls as a head coach and you've scored 12 points in the fourth quarter in three super bowls or 12 to uh, three super bowls as a head coach or an oc and your offenses have produced a total of 12 points in the fourth quarter in overtime i mean you're talking about four quarters of football 12 points with under pressure so, you know, I, I, I gotta wonder, um, if that's Kyle, if that's the players, it's all, well, don't know. I mean, it takes a team, right? I mean, it's, it's, everyone's looking for the one guy to blame. I really do think that this is a, a, a team where there's more than just one guy to blame, which brings us back to the head coach because he's responsible for all the guys that we're picking amongst who to blame. You know, it, it feels like Ray Ray wasn't coached to uh, to just fall on a fumble, which is just amazing to me. I mean, all you do is special teams, and you don't even do that very well as a returner. So you'd figure you'd have the fundamentals of it all down. You know, again, there's always somebody trying to take it too far. Purdy is an average. He just sucks. You have no statistical evidence, be it. Numbers produced in terms of in-game stats or win losses for the 49ers to even come close to backing that up. What you're saying in your comment here, Easy Mercs Z, is you do not know what you're talking about. 
There's nothing about the start to Brock Purdy's career that suggests he is average statistically or team-wide just in the win-loss column. He has gotten to an NFC title game and a Super Bowl in his first two years. That's not bad. He isn't average. He just sucks. I mean, come on. Come on, bro. That's a clown. That's a clown quote, bro. That's a clown. That's a clown question, bro. Oh man. It was a, it was a rough one, man. And it's going to be a rough to get over this one because it's going to take forever to get back here. Even if they can green Bay's on the rise, Detroit's on the rise. I mean, those teams are absolutely getting nothing, but hey, you know who's also on the rise. The Los Angeles Rams. Possibly. The demise of the Los Angeles they Rams. They do have an old quarterback. They, exaggerated. they do have a 30-whatever, 30 35-year-old quarterback. So I don't look at them as on the rise like I look at – Look, know, quarterbacks are playing in their 40s now, though, Larry. I mean, 35 is the new 31, right? Yeah. yeah if the Rams get – um, you know, build up their whole defense in one year, um, their defense is not not championship caliber. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I mean, see, this is a year-to-year league at this point. Right. There is no – there is there is very, very little evidence that, you know, one game translates to another. So try to take one season and roll it into another is is totally ridiculous. Um, It's – it was a great year for the 49ers that ends – in brutal fashion. I mean, just absolutely brutal fashion. And there is no sugarcoating that. There is zero putting there, there's there's no way to dress this up. There's no lipstick for the pig of this loss, Larry. There isn't. And, you know, people are saying, Damon, you you know, you you grew up a Bears fan. You don't even root for the 49ers. Why are you so mad? I'm so mad because I knew how good they were. And they left how good they were somewhere in the regular season to really not be found in this postseason. And that's disappointing. The worst the Niners looked in this year was in their three postseason games. If you added it all up together, they were unimpressive until they beat the Packers. They were unimpressive against the Detroit Lions for more of that game than anyone would like to admit. And not for, but for Dan Campbell's mistakes. I don't even know if they reach the Super Bowl and then they get to the Super Bowl and there is a level of unimpressive that you have to attach to this game as well. Yeah, it was a bad game. I mean, what can you say? It was a bad game, but this per- the Purdy sucks and the guys are, give me some numbers. How about go look up any number you want? How right. That? He's a statistical passing leader in just about any single statistical passing stat you look up. He's in the top five in everything, if not in the top two or leading everything else. I mean, what what number are you looking for? It's all out there. Right. I mean, I I don't know. I I if if I if you're looking for numbers at this point, you're just don't want to find them or you just don't care or you just want to, you know, that's fine. You're mad. You want to say Purdy sucks. Fine. Go say Purdy sucks, but you should be telling me backing up why he sucks with some number instead of telling me when I tell you you're high that you're like, well, show me a number. How about go pick up a book and pick up anything? I mean, the guy's number one, in almost every offensive fucking category. Maybe he doesn't suck. Maybe you're just pissed. Maybe you lost some money, which is okay. Which is okay, but again, let's not, let's not, let's not, there's plenty of blame to go around. Looking to attach the blame of this loss to someone who doesn't really deserve it when other guys a thousand percent deserve it. How about this? How great is it? How good could any quarterback be in a game where his offensive line is doing a shit job protecting for him and two of his biggest weapons, his tight end and his wide receiver are not to be found in the game? And the other wide receiver has three catches. And the offensive player of the year, even though he had, what, 30 touches, needed at least 35. <laughs> you know, it, it it's hard to see somebody gets 30 touches and say that they weren't used enough. 
But I will go to my grave telling you that Christian McCaffrey was not used enough in a game where he was used plenty, but it still wasn't enough. Again, Kyle needs, Kyle 100% needs a run the ball coach to just remind him to run the ball. And if it works, stay with it. You know, stay with it. But, um, you know, I mean, what can you say? I mean, on one hand, you could easily sit there and go, well, Andy Reid's a Hall of Famer. Mahomes is a Hall of Famer. Um, When the lights were shining bright, they performed, and that's why they're them. Okay. And there's nothing wrong about any of that. But let's be honest. The, The 49ers had opportunities in that game. There were a bunch of fumbles. They didn't fall on any. Um, they, they easily could have fallen on two or three more of those fumbles. It would have been different. You know, their offensive, their defensive line is, is a strength. And they went up against an offensive line that have led the league in holding. And yet there's plenty examples of Niners getting bear hugged, but there were no holding calls. So that was a bad break. Um, and then, you know, obviously not the, the Shanahan mistake in overtime is another bad break. I mean, and there was a bunch of them. Greenlaw going out. That was a bad break. Um, they just they just had an awful lot of adversity in this game. And and um, you could kind of tell that the way Andy Reid was coaching in the playoffs, that he knew he had a flawed team that was not a vintage team, and he wasn't going to take too many chances. And they didn't take tons of chances even in this game. You know, it was a very pedestrian first half for Kansas City. It yeah. felt like he wasn't even asking Patrick Mahomes to go do Patrick Mahomesy things. But boy, did he save that for late in the fourth quarter in overtime. And uh, I remember you and I talking about this. The 49ers got the better race car, but there's no doubt the best race car driver on the track is Patrick Mahomes. And when it's all said and done, the singular excellence of Patrick Mahomes beats another football team. There are very few quarterbacks in the history of this league that are better than everything and everyone you got all combined all at once. Mahomes is that guy. So if your answer is, oh, then go out and find another Patrick Mahomes. That's like saying, you know, I'm really impressed by Saturn's rings. Go find me another Saturn. Yeah. There is I mean, no other just, Saturn. <laughs> and once again, what, are you going to get rid of the guy that's doing the job for you to draft another big guy with a strong arm and just hope that he becomes Mahomes on, uh, you know, I mean, if you want, you could probably go call the Bears right now and get Justin Fields. Is he better than than uh, Purdy? I would say probably not. Not as a passer. He's bigger. He's faster. He can run like the wind, but he's 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 not the he is not the definitively better player. Not not even cl- not even close. Yeah. You know, if the quarterback's first job is to throw the ball, then Purdy is a better quarterback. Bad Mike or bad X or what is this? Bad X Mike says Purdy is the best second year quarterback in the last 20 years or second. uh, Yeah. Second year quarterback in the last 20 years. I would agree with that. You know, well, how about this with Patrick Mahomes being the first, right? Oh yeah. Uh, A couple more super chats came in. Gizmo Maltese. Kelsey, more yardage and receptions than Ayuk, Debo, and Kittle combined. And remember, like I said, great players cannot be stopped over the course of four quarters. You might have them at halftime, but then they make the adjustments, and the adjustments were made. The adjustments were made. And Kelsey ends up being the leading, the the the, the leading yardage pass catcher in the game not just for the Chiefs but in the entire game if we lose JJ draft rice if we lose draft JJ rice no no he's saying if we lose Jawan Jennings draft Brendan rice oh, rice, oh, rice is okay. kid. which I, I I would do I would do um the only thing is you're probably gonna have to use a, a one of your third round picks or one of your fourth round picks on him. He's not going to be there forever. Um, so there you go. Phil Valley says I'm unhinged and I, he wish I was, I was like this every day. Do I really seem unhinged right you now? You don't seem unhinged. I, I definitely do not seem unhinged. It's like uh, in, in glorious bastards 
when Stiglitz is sharpening his knife in the corner before they go down to the bar and, uh, and, and, and what's his name walks up to him and goes, you calm down. Just remain calm. He's like, don't I look calm to you? Is he's just sharpening his knife. Larry's just sharpening his knife. Herbie Holland. Damn, Larry, you're angry this afternoon. All I was saying is that you and uh, all I was saying is that you thought Eddie wouldn't fire Kyle. I think he would. And of course, Kyle is going nowhere, but I have my opinion. And Herbie, you know, you always pay to put that opinion out there. And we thank you very much for being generous in the super chat. Again, here he is being generous again. Herbie coming in with another two bucks. Still love both of you guys. Even angry Larry Herbie. We love you too. Um, would you like to address Herbie directly? Well, I mean, say whatever you want, but I mean, any, just remember this, any jackass can take a sledgehammer to their kitchen. It takes a contractor to rebuild it. So don't be any jackass taking a sledgehammer to the Niners kitchen before you have even the slightest idea of how to build the thing back up. You want to get rid of Purdy, but who's going to quarterback the team? You want to get rid of Kyle? That's fine. Who's going to be the head coach of the team? Anybody can say wreck shop and destroy it. It takes a lot more skill to say, and then come back with this guy that you acquire in this capacity. And this is how it's going to work. I think the so that's one, all I'm pushing back on. Right. I'm pushing back on the notion of, you know, destroy everything. Anybody can take a sledgehammer to anything. Can you build it back? Don't take us. The Niners did this once before. They took a sledgehammer to the to a guy named Jim Harbaugh, and they got rid of him. But they didn't have any any new head coach to hire, so they just hired the guy that they thought would be, you know, be happy with the job who was nearby, and that was Jim Tom Sula, and he sucked. And then they replaced him with Chip Kelly because they wanted an innovative offensive guy, and he sucked worse. And then suddenly they were the worst roster in football and they needed like a three- or four-year rebuild, and that's when they hired Shanahan. And sure enough, in his third year, he's in the Super Bowl. But, I mean, you know, if you're going to say take a sledgehammer to Purdy or to uh, Shanahan, that's fine. But if you want my respect or if you want my admiration in any way, you'll come up with something that you think is better, not just the sledgehammer. I think the one thing that anyone who wanted to argue against you has Larry would be, okay, so I don't have a, I don't think Kirk Cousins is just better than Brock Purdy. I don't think you have a better solution. And, you know, trying to trying out a new quarterback every two years is an experiment that hasn't gotten the 49ers anything to this point. I would not like to run that experiment again when we see so many good data points being returned by Brock Purdy. Kyle Shanahan, wildly successful. He's done a very good job in so many ways. But if you're asking, what might be better than him? How about this, the, the guy who's won more Super Bowls than any other head coach on the history of the planet who is available? I mean, that would be the one thing. All right, so if I wanted to get rid of Kyle Shanahan, you better have a better name for me. Well, he's a lot older. He's like 30 years more down the road, but his name is Bill Belichick. Now, Bill Belichick's got the biggest coaching dick in the world. He's also got a terrible record in the last five years. Not his defense, though. Not his defense. His defense can play. His, but, I mean, you're talking about winning. They haven't won. Um, how many coaches can take Jimmy G to the Super Bowl, enable Mr. Irrelevant to go toe-to-toe with Mahomes in his Super Bowl in his first full year? Kyle Shanahan is not the problem. He's responsible for 25% of the coaches in the NFL. You are right about all that. He also didn't know the rules of overtime in the biggest game in the world. Again, there's just something to come back here and and yank that rug out from underneath Kyle whenever you want to. Uh, Harby, we already did that. This is from Dreesen. Larry and Damon, much love to you both. While streaming this game, I couldn't help but think of the crowd I thought was kicking the field goal. Uh, in overtime was a mistake. This was the Super Bowl. You go for the touchdown or bust. I agree. I agree. Would have taken bowling balls to go for the touchdown, but... The thing is, though, and if you don't go for the touchdown, you're leaving the team with, like, they got to go 96 yards on you. 
Somebody says Larry looks drained. Larry is drained. Let's do. That's what happens when you spend about a most most of the week in Las Vegas, and then you come back, and the Super Bowl just kicks you right in the ass. Damon, just giving you a hard time early on. Get rid of Debo and Kittle. Take the 49ers are close, and it shouldn't lose their top players. Cheers. Well, thank you, James. But here's the thing: the salary cap is going to take one of them out. Not my hard feelings or my opinion. The the 49ers. The reason why this year was just so crucial for them is because their economic model that this team is built upon is about to be shifted underneath their feet. So they had very, very, they they don't have much longer with this. And this now has to change dramatically before next year starts. And then the biggest change will come when Brock gets that next deal. Because Brock Purdy, if he plays with any degree of this year or next year resembling this year's regular season, Brock Purdy is a $40 million a year quarterback in this league. You're going to have to pay him market rate. And when you which start is, paying Which Brock is Purdy fine as, as long as you hit in the draft. You know, they have to hit in the draft. Losing, um, you know, Adam Peters. Is that what's that going to do to their draft, their drafting ability and their day three of the draft and their undrafted free agents? I mean, they're going to have to continue to hit in the draft. Uh, they're going to have to continue to find players in the draft. And if they can't do that at a pretty high rate, because Detroit is proving they can and Green Bay is proving they can. And we're going to find out about John Lynch and how good of a general manager John Lynch is because um you know they they have needs now and they ha- and and as Brock gets paid that's fine but that just means that you can't fill the, your needs with veterans in the free agent window you need to fill them with draft picks and develop your your roster um i the one thing i really was uncomfortable with this year was i was uncomfortable watching talented younger players who were getting run on other teams getting no run on this team and somehow you know, they're going to have to start leaning on the D Winters and the Jair Browns and the Jalen Grahams and, you know, their, their ability to win, um, will is, is a lot of way in a lot of ways tied to their ability to draft. This is, uh, this is gen three Kali. There's too much praise from Mahomes. People are making the Chiefs out to be unbeatable when they were an extra point away from losing. No, there isn't enough praise for Mahomes. And he has, in such short amount of time, uh, leapfrogged the legacies of Joe Montana and Steve Young and maybe even Tom Brady and certainly Peyton Manning. Patrick Mahomes is having the best start to an NFL career of any career the NFL has ever seen. Full stop, hit print, that's the headline. Patrick Mahomes might be one of the five greatest football players of all time, mentioned in the same breath as Lawrence Taylor, Jerry Rice. He is one of the all-timers. When it's finally done and we come up with the all-time football depth chart, there is a chance that QB1 will be Patrick Mahomes. He's that good. And I'm not exaggerating. No, he's... Come on. He's the best quarterback in the game. Time to trade away an offensive weapon or two to improve that O-line through the draft. Yeah, they, they're going to need to spend money. And the truth is, Larry, who's the best? You don't need to look this up right now. But who is the best experienced offensive lineman about to hit this draft? Because, you know, if they draft three offensive linemen, the chance of one of them being a real NFL player is uh, is is as best as you can really hope for. So maybe you got to go get a proven entity, which comes at no short cost in this league during free agency. I mean, there's a possibility you can go in free agency and try to make it happen. Um, most likely, though, you don't even see those guys get to free agency. I mean, this is the, there's such a need for premier pass blocking, you know, tackles that there just aren't a lot of them out there. Just period, just not. So, um, you know, the bottom line is they're going to have to go into the draft and find somebody. 
And the good news is that it's a very deep tackle draft. There's probably going to be seven or eight that go in the first round. Um, and they're all pretty good. Uh, you know, and Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma, um, I think is the guy that probably will be on the board when they wind up picking. And is he, he's the tackle, right? Yeah. He's six, seven, he's 325 pounds. He's, he's a really good player. Uh, there's other guys though. Patrick Paul from Houston's really good. And Sumatea from BYU is really good. And I mean, there's a bunch of guys that are, that are going to be staring at them. Amarius Mims potentially from Georgia, but JC Latham is the, the guy that they absolutely need is JC Latham. He's the right tackle from Alabama and the Niners need a right tackle. This guy's six, six, he's three thirty five. He could be a plug and play right tackle, but you'd probably have to trade either Debo or Brandon Ayuk or something to get into the middle of the first round to get Latham. Do you think Trent comes back? Yeah. He's already said he's coming back. Okay, good. Hopefully he doesn't come back with back-to-back penalties in a fucking Super Bowl. Right. Orlando, Orlando Pace would never. Jim Covert would never. Well, you know, and, and it, it wasn't just Trent. He ain't all time. It wasn't just Trent. I mean, the, the Niners blew this in several different mm-hmm. ways. Um, it wasn't it no, wasn't like it was just Trent. No. Trent Trent made some some bad calls, but to me, I mean bad mistakes, but I mean third quarter. You know, Jair Brown intercepts Mahomes, third snap after halftime. But the Niners go three and out, and they took just a minute off the clock. And then that was backed up by a Aaron Banks false start. And then the defense forced the Chiefs to go three and out. And Purdy then takes the ball and he has through three ensuing passes and they yield they don't get a first down. And so they breeze to another three and out. Then Debo suffers a hamstring strain. Um, you know, I mean the Niners went three and out again at the end of the third quarter. So, and then they muffed the, the, uh, the chiefs end of quarter punt that bounced off looter and wasn't correctly corralled by, uh, Ray Ray. So the third quarter was a freaking nightmare from start to finish, to be honest. I got a tough question for you. Who wins the Super Bowl first? Kyle Shanahan, D'Amico Ryans, or Jim Harbaugh? I'll say Kyle Shanahan. I'll say Kyle Shanahan. I think it's going to take Jimmy probably at least two or three years to get it up and rolling. Um, I'm not convinced that Herbert can outplay Mahomes in a big game. We'll have to see that. Um, So I think they've got some questions. D'Amico, I think, had a real nice first year, but I I expect them to regress a little bit. This year they they took everybody, caught everybody by surprise. They're not going to catch everybody by surprise. Um, there'll be some growing pains for CJ Stroud once the league studies him for a full off season. I'll say Shanahan, but it'll it'll be close. Brad times Mike with a super chat saying Kyle went into the postseason and the Super Bowl scared and clipped Purdy's wings. He didn't let, uh, him, he didn't let him what throw deep like he did during the regular season. I don't know if Purdy had the pocket to get off that deep throw. When he did get off deep throws, Larry, you could see he was going off of his back foot. He, I mean, the Purdy's footwork on some of those deep throws were just rendered unfundamental by the pressure that he was under. And and if you, if you are going to slow down Brock Purdy, the really good way to do it is to have blanket coverage and pressure up the middle. And that is two things that Steve Spagnuolo threw at Brock Purdy all game long. Blanket coverage, even though he was blitzing, right up Main Street. And they did it with smaller guys, and they got home. You know, and they really uh, they they got some good hits on Brock. Uh, Christmas was a big game. Purdy got embarrassed. Right, but then they reached the Super Bowl. So, you know, you got to get over that, right? I mean, and the team that, by the way, so thoroughly embarrassed them, didn't reach the Super Bowl. So, um, yes, the, the the 49ers lost to the Ravens on Christmas. Thank you. That is correct. We knew that. 
I love the people in the chat reminding you that the Niners passed on Mahomes. It's like, yeah, we remember. Well, look, I mean, and that is another damnation against Kyle and 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 uh, and and John Lynch. You know, they 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 saw Trey Lance and said, "Oh yeah, we got to go trade up for that," and they didn't even bother sending a scout to Patrick Mahomes' pro day. Well, I mean, I do understand. It's very, very difficult to handicap the quarterback market, and teams make the wrong decisions on the quarterback market every single year. So they liked a guy in Kirk Cousins, and they're like, oh, well, we'll build up our defense. We'll take a little fewer chances. We won't take a chance on a high-risk, high-reward pick. And then they had wound up having to do that anyway, and they took Trey Lance. So it's you know it's you know you you can't bemoan um, the high pick pressure that comes with being you know in the spot they're in. I mean they they passed on Mahomes, they passed on Mahomes. So you know they got to wear it now, and and you know Mahomes is the guy, the quarterback of his generation. Herbie Holland again. Who's spending an awful lot of money to argue with you today, Larry. So at least thank you very much, Herbie, for uh, for dropping these in supers. Uh, with all due respect, Larry, Marty Schottenheimer was fired after going 13-3 and three and losing. Kyle is responsible for the entire team, including defense, and his defense, to me, has lost him those games. I mean, Kyle does have to replace a defensive coordinator every single time I look up. Um, but... This is yeah, look, it's there's so much blame to go around. That is the that's the the mind numbing thing of this to try to just reduce it to one person is hard to do, which means it all falls under the umbrella of the head coach. Look, this is why Kyle makes an awful lot of money, because he is gonna catch holy hell between now and the day he wins a Super Bowl. It like the holy hell doesn't start when week one gets here next year. This is who he is. He is the galactic loser in the biggest game of the year. In the biggest game that he is in, he always loses it until he doesn't. And that is the life that Kyle now leads. You're really good, but ultimately not good enough. The only thing that Kyle has on his side is he's got a good team. He's got an organization that is a winning organization. And he's going to be 45 years old. What, next December? or February, whenever his birthday is, like, he's so young. He's so young. I mean, as and as far as, you know, okay, great. You want to fire Schottenheimer? I mean, you want to fire Kyle Shanahan because Schottenheimer got fired? Okay. I mean, and, I mean, once again, did – did Norv Turner take over the Chargers in 2007 from Marty Schottenheimer and and win the Super Bowl? No. You know, they went 14 and 2 under Marty in 20, 2006. They got rid of Marty. The next year they went 11 and 5 under Norv. Kyle's not the reason we lost. We had a lot of wide receivers open, but Brock couldn't give them the ball because the O-line sucked. It's from uh, Sagi2112. Offensive line was a problem all year. Pass protection was a problem all year, and it reared its head in the Super Bowl. It's amazing how the problems that you have all year show up at the worst times, right, Larry? <laughs> yeah, it's just the way it goes, right? I mean, you're gonna you're only as weak you're on, you're strong as your weakest link. Um, and their weakest link was their offensive line a good portion of the year, and their O line got whipped when it mattered. You know, uh, so. someone who's got a handle like the name of a robot in a bad science fiction movie uh, has been generous enough to put ten dollars into the super chat says Mahomes and Andy Reid. Reid was under Mike Holmgren, who was with Bill Walsh and coach Montana and Young. We lost to the closest connection to Bill Walsh. Yeah. Yeah, there's 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 no doubt. Andy Reid is uh, really, really good at this. And remember, Andy Reid was at a point in his career that Kyle feels like he's standing in right now. And with. You know, how's, here's the deal. Kyle will be a Super Bowl champion one day. I believe that. Will he be it with the 49ers is now an official question I keep asking myself. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Just, just scrolling here looking for the Herbie again. Just 
<laughs> coming in. You guys got me drinking already this afternoon. We can tell by your super chatting aggressiveness, Herb, even. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Well, um, I, I, I'm fine with you. Once again, you want to get rid of Shanahan, get rid of Shanahan. But come in here and tell us who that you're going to replace him with. Bill Belichick. He's going to be better. Bill Belichick. See, I don't think Bill Belichick's a good answer. I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I respect it, but the reality is, is they were like what twelve and twenty-two in the last two years there. So, is he really an upgrade at this point? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't want to make any GM decisions, but um, I mean, I like Bill Belichick, but I mean, I'm just saying. Somebody here, I, says, I would bring him in as a defensive coordinator. Skip. And, Skip Bayless says, you ignored my super chat. Sorry, Skip. Anything with the word Skip Bayless on it, I automatically ignore just in my nature. I You could leave us a billion-dollar super chat under the name Skip Bayless. I probably won't even see it because I assume you're just a troll at this point. Um, James W.F. Zintner, the guard, the All-American from Michigan, third rounder. Larry, analysis. He, I believe you're talking about the transfer. I kind of like the kid that's going to go later in the draft for the Michigan Wolverines. His name's Keegan. He was the left guard, um, six six, long arms, team captain. I like I like Zinter too. Don't get me wrong, but I like Ladarius Henderson, who was their left tackle. I think he's going to be like a fourth round pick, and I I love him. And I think Keegan in the fifth or sixth round would be a very good pick. He was kind of their he was their kind of gutty leader on that law offensive line. Those are the, I like Henderson and Keegan more than I like Zinter. From uh, Ahru, Ahru, uh, let's get Bill Belichick and a young quarterback focused OC who can run Shanahan's system. Um, th you know, at what point? At what point do you have enough of what Kyle has done successfully to where you don't need Kyle to do it successfully? Right? I mean, I don't know. I, I Again, I, I've spent more time defending Kyle Shanahan than, than just about anybody. thinking, I, And I do believe he is a very good coach. But he just has not been good for the 49ers when they needed him the most. And today, honestly... I, I, I wasn't ready to come down Kyle Shanahan's road this hard until I heard that Kyle Juszczyk and Eric Armstead said that at no point in time it, over the course of the last season did Kyle discuss a new overtime rule with his team. And that, to me, is a level of negligence that it is a fireable offense. I don't think he's going to get fired, but Kyle has officially committed a fireable offense. Would you agree with me there, Larry? This is a fireable offense that he will not be fired for. He's I don't. I don't know if it's credit. a. I don't know if it's a fireable offense, but he that his players didn't know, but he's got to know, and he's the guy who made that decision. So it doesn't bother me that Eric Armstead didn't know. What bothers me is that Kyle didn't know. Because Kyle is the guy that has to know because Kyle, you're going to make your decision of whether to take the ball or not take the ball based on the rules. And if you don't know the rules, that's not good. Shitty loss, but I discovered wake up big fan. Well, thank you, James. And I guess, Larry, you know, let's let's sort of change the 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 the, the juju of the show. Not the juju Smith Schuster of the show, but the juju of the show. Um, we love working together. Obviously, Larry and I just spent uh, nearly a week in, in Vegas uh, with his son, Kevin, as well, who came on out and was a huge help. And Larry and I have known each other for almost a quarter century together here. We've known each other a very, very long time, and we've always kind of to work together, wanted to do a regular show together. But no station in this town was ever smart enough to get that done, although we almost came close. But that's another story. Um, what we've got. Starting, and I want to get the date right here, March 4th, the first calendared Monday in the month of March, Larry and I are going to be bringing you Wake Up three days a week. Our start time will be at 8.30. We will go to 9.15. It will be a tight 45-minute show coming to you three days a week from 8.30 to 9.15, the perfect show to fit into your morning routine, to have downloaded and be able to listen to on your lunch break, your lunch hour, 
And as we said many times in Vegas, Larry, we're going to keep it tight. We're going to keep it tight like a tiger. And that's what we're going to do, and we're really looking forward to it. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday throughout the offseason. So join us uh, in the mornings, and uh, we'll provide a lot of good Bay Area sports content, a ton of Niners, maybe even some Warriors and Giants along the way. Well, and and what we're definitely going to do is spend Mondays and Fridays concentrating on, on our own backyard out here in the Bay Area. But Wednesdays, we'll skew a little bit more national. And we make sure that we're on the big stories that every sports fan is talking about. So we're really looking forward to what we've got here. And, you know, to, to, to wrap up things on a, you know, a, a positive note, it's been an awesome, awesome first year for, for me here on YouTube. Um, Larry, you've been a, a wild leg up for me here on YouTube. I was lucky to have not only my own reputation to bring with me here to YouTube, um, and I would tell anyone starting a YouTube channel, a, a nice way to start it is with, you know, a near 20 year career where you've got some recognition in the town that you're doing business in is, um, but having a, a, a guy like you who very much like me got thrust into this situation a couple of years before me, you were able to hand me a playbook that I've been running, um, since the day I started, you started with no playbook. Like nobody told you how to get going. You learned an awful lot and you passed that knowledge on to me. And uh, I thank you greatly for it. And it's why you're, uh, you're not just a broadcasting partner and a co-host, you're a friend. So uh, I, I thank you an awful lot, partner. I appreciate it, man. And, um, you know, onward and upward, I think everybody who does 49er content, uh, lost some, some subscribers this morning. I just looked at my subscriber list. I was at 38,755 and now I'm at 38,748. So what happened to those seven people? But now nah, I understand, but people come, people go, we've added over 5,000 subs in the last four weeks alone. And a lot of those people come because of the Super Bowl and, and may disappear when the Super Bowl is over. So I do understand that, but uh, we're going to put out great content throughout the year. And uh, this is going to be a place that you're going to want to be on a regular basis. And um, uh, with that being said, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody this year. It's been a great Niner year. I know all of you are disappointed. I'm disappointed. Uh, I know all of you, if you're like me, are somewhat like deflated today and just kind of like, you know, I can't believe I just fucking watched that. Um, but you know what? It's just going to make it so much sweeter when we're all standing there in the winter circle at some point in the future. So uh, thank you to Damon. Thank you to all of you guys. And and uh, thanks to my son, Kevin, who's done more than anybody could ever do to to uh, help me rise up these ranks. And the Krug Show sitting at 38,748. We've produced almost 5 million views in the last four weeks alone and over 420,000 watch hours. So. Uh, thank you to everybody who's watched any of my videos, streams, and uh, there'll be more to come in the days and weeks and months ahead. Here you go. This sums it up very well. JP from the 510. To all the trolls, F off, but at least hit that like button on your way out. Again, you're going to need somewhere. <laughs> you're going to need someone to come and troll. Now, it's really easy to go troll people who don't know what they're talking about. We do know what we're talking about. So come troll us. We appreciate the eyeballs and the views without being clickbaity. Uh, we will we'll take it all. We really, really will. A few more coming in here. This is Gen 3 Khalil saying, uh, let's have some perspective. Andy is 9-0 and with the Eagles, 16-7 and with the Chiefs. Kyle is 8-3. and Give him some room to work. Unfortunately, those losses keep coming at the wrong, wrong time. But you're right. I mean, patience is a very hard thing to ask of anyone in 2024. That's the year that we're in now. Um and more patience is going to have to be applied here, whether you like it or not, because it's a long time before we're in the month of, well, late August or early September when week one starts next year. So patience is is the prescription that we all need. Um, we'll, we'll find out what Ralph Barbieri might have thought of everything here in just a second. But, Larry, commercials. I mean, I know, you know, like we're, we're, we're watching the game. We're uh, we're sitting here, you know, I, during commercial breaks or when I'm making a lot of notes and my mind is racing and whatnot. Um, what do you think? What do you think? Did any of these commercials stand out to you for either being particularly good or particularly weird or particularly bad? 
You know what? It was the first Super Bowl that I literally didn't pay attention to the commercials. I really didn't. Um, there were some good ones, and when I watch it again, I'll, I'm sure I'll have something to say in the next day or two. But I was so so you know pent up and nervous, and you know I just couldn't. I just took a deep breath during the commercials. I really did. By the way, Jillian, who is uh, in, in here watching as well, the uh, Bad Times Mike, thanks for the support. Did I miss a super chat from you, brother? I'm so sorry. Thank you very, very much for the support. Again, Herbie is just throwing him back at this point. Uh, come on, guys. At least I'm sending in money. <laughs> Again, thank you. <laughs> thank you very, very much. That's, that, that, at least we got that going for us uh, right now. Again, what do we got here? Uh, uh, bad times, Mike. Again, uh, y'all learn. Uh, y'all earned it in the moment. My comment was read without it being in the super chat. Uh, hit me right in the feels. There you go. Thank you very, very much. We do appreciate it. Um, I'll just say I thought the Dunkin' Donuts, Benefer, Matt Damon, Tom Brady commercial, like that kind of made me laugh. The BMW commercial uh, where everyone's doing an impression of Christopher Walken to Christopher Walken. Hey, oh, the, the, everyone's got a Christopher Walken impression, right? Um, that that was out there. Uh, the Chris Pratt Pringles commercial I thought was kind of funny. And the weirdest commercial, the weirdest commercial was the Jesus washes everyone's feet, which again is a beautiful kind act of submission to, you know, like I, I get it biblically what it all means and what it represents. What was weird about the commercial, first of all, is that Jesus is buying commercials in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Number does two. He get a deal? Does he get a deal? You'd, you'd think, right? But, uh, uh, you know, if, if like to me, if you have to advertise your religion, your Scientology, right? Like I can't believe Jesus needs a commercial as bad as he needs ones these days. And if Jesus were to dial up a commercial, I'm really surprised that he picked he picked in excess, never tear you apart to be the background music. Jesus washing feet to in excess didn't have that one. Didn't have that one coming down the pipe. Didn't think that that was going to happen. Um, but there was, there was, look, uh, Usher at halftime. That guy's got some talent, right? I mean, good God, he can make a move, he can dance, he can sing. That's called a triple threat, everybody. Um, the Arnold State Farm commercial made me chuckle from Nathaniel Richards. I thought that was, that, good. That that was, was good. pretty good. That was pretty good. Get to the choppa. He doesn't. He doesn't hit hard R's. Arnold's never been good on the hard R's. That is for sure. Um, I don't even think I want to do a Trent Balky. But if I ask, if Ralph were on the air today, what do you, what do you, what do you think he's wrapping up on this one? Who's getting, who's getting the brunt of Ralph's ire today, Larry? If we're really upset here. And I got to, I got to drag Tommy and Tate. And we got to get the Miata, and we got to throw somebody in the trunk because that's how it is. Who's going in the Miata trunk today? If you're Ralph, <laughs> you know I love Kyle Shanahan. I've always said it. I've, I've, I, I truly love Kyle Shanahan. But what he did yesterday is indefensible. I mean, it's, it, I mean, I, I, there's no other way around it. I mean, I told Tom, I told Tate, I told Peter from Amici's, I told everybody that I came in contact with that, that, you know, Kyle's a great guy. He's a good friend. I like having him on the show. Tom and I both do, right, Tom? Yeah, we do. We really do. Uh, but I, 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 you know, what can you say? I mean, I, 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 I'm not really sure what, how this would go down today. I wouldn't want to take him for a drive in the Miata. I, I'll, I'll put it at that. I just leave it at that. Sports don't build character. They reveal it. <laughs>